workshop. Superintendent, everybody that you need is here? Yes, sir. Thank you right. very much, Chairman Soto. We have our consultants here who've been working on our impact fee study, Sarah Graber, our Chief Finance Officer, as well as supporting staff in the audience should the board have questions that you need some assistance in, from us in terms of answering them. Right. Um, I think you'll see that we've um, done a pretty thorough job, I believe, of the impact fee study, and she will walk through the process, some of the initial findings, and then it really is up to the board to have opportunity for discussion. You asked us when we started out to try to look at this differently, to take into consideration some of the questions, comments, concerns we've had from short-term rental folks in our community, which I will have to say for Osceola County is something that's fairly unique. You don't really see it in other counties, so it's a different facet of this here and, and what we're doing. We also wanted to look at, is it possible to look at different types of categories, ways to break it down, whether it's size, different unit types, and you'll see some information about that as well. Um, but we are basically here as supporting cast to answer your questions and then hopefully get direction from you today. Um, again, we don't have this on the agenda for our meeting this evening. It would be brought back to our Oct October 2nd meeting agenda for a board recommendation. And before the consultants begin, board, I would like to just to the best of your ability, write down and hold your questions until they're done with the presentation. However, if it's just very important that you interrupt because the topic is just right on point and it needs to be discussed before they continue, you may do so. I just want you to be very careful about that so that they have their opportunity to go ahead and, and be a, you know keep stride and get us this information that we need. Mr. That okay? I just want to make one point before we start. For the, for the October board meeting that uh, Dr. Pace referenced, I will not be in town, but I plan on calling in to vote. That's fine. That's we, we, we could telephone, all right? Yes. We'll just make sure that that's all arranged. Okay. Um, Sarah, well, we don't have to take any other comment from him. No, we'll cut it off. <laughs> 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 only opening the line for the vote. You don't know what he's doing in the other side of that phone. He can be in front of a bar drinking, you know. It may be interesting. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. That, you got me back, <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. I got us off. Good job. No, that's, that's good that you did it before mm -hmm. this weekend. <laughs> oh, good afternoon. Okay, we have a presentation. So we have the you know, draft results to share with you, and uh, the presentation goes through a little bit of background and then the findings and, and the next steps. As you know, the last technical study update was done in 2014, and this study is using what we call consumption-based methodology, which is also the um, same methodology as the adopted fee, and it also fulfills the uh, state requirements of using most recent and localized data. So impact fee, as you know, is a one-time capital charge to new development, and it covers the cost of new capital facilities, additional facilities. And uh, school impact fees are only collected from residential land uses, and that's kind of why they are, tend to be on the higher end they are not split between residential and non-residential. Okay, so this is a, just kind of a giving you a historical collections over the past uh, four or five years. So, so you can see a uh, number of units pulled and then the revenue. So on average, it seems like about 3,500 units a year and about almost 30 million a year in revenues. Our basic impact fee equation it basically takes the cost of providing school infrastructure, so that's the school buildings and transportation and all the capital items. Uh, from that, we subtract any non-impact fee funding from new developments to the extent that school district is using ad valorem taxes and so on. A portion of it is coming from new development. And that net cost is multiplied by demand, which is the generation, student generation rates per home. Um, as far as the schedule, uh, we are targeting giving you the draft report toward the end of the month, depending on the outcome of this meeting. And then there is a, a school board approval meeting tentatively scheduled for October 3rd. And then uh, it, we, there's a presentation to growth management task force, I believe, and then the board of county. Why, is, why would that order be reversed? I'm sorry, Kevin. Shouldn't they present to the growth management task force before we approve this? If that's if they're wanting some input. <coughs> I don't know what their schedule is. What? Typically, is, the is, board makes a recommendation, or the, we've made a recommendation, and the board mm -hmm. has kind of a plan, not just the draft results before we go to the growth management task force, but certainly we can do that any way you'd like. Yeah, that's your answer. I don't okay, Just be I don't think if it's already done and approved, it'd be a pretty quick presentation, and no need to have a lot no, of that's a valid point. 
Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, the, okay, well, hold on. Keep in mind, final approval comes, though, from the county commission. You, I don't, you know, yeah. that's, that's why no, there's another that, step in the I, process. I don't, I don't want to be embarrassed by presenting something, approving it, going to the county commission, being shot down because we missed something simple. In it. And you know what? Is that, something, is that just the way that the county commission prefers that we do this? I mean, I could see sense in either way. Yeah. I, <laughs> I just, I, I was out with Brandon, I was out with chairman of the county commission this weekend, and he's just looking for us to get information on them and they'll support whatever we whatever we decide. And, and and you know what that's precisely what when this topic came up back in 2014 actually 2013 before you guys came on board well we it was our first was meeting that clarence right. came on that we had to vote on it but it you right guys had dealt with it you had went through the whole process <laughs> yeah and i was under the impression just like mr wheeler that you know they pretty much rely on our judgment they do rely on so. it unless unless they have 3,000 people show up that have some problems with it. I'd rather, I mean, that's just my But opinion. certainly we can, if, if you'd prefer, we take it to yeah, the Growth well, Management Task Force first. We can. can we do it at our second October meeting? Uh, yes, Chairman? absolutely. If that's up to you. As long as maybe, Are we yeah. under a time constraint? And I can be here for that meeting. I'll be here in person. The idea is that you have implementation, hopefully, in effect by January 1, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, but when we want to implement so, if I if if um if I understand this correctly. It just seems backwards for us to approve something and then go present it to a you're talking about steps to a pretty two. long established you're talking about group. you're talking about um you're talking about reversing steps two and three I mean mm -hmm. correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you say presentation to growth management on October third and the school board well, approval have to get on them. Yeah. Or yeah, I don't know what the date was. Well, Before whatever you, they meet every Friday, I think. Thursday. I think the question is Thursday, just that we want to make sure we have the board support of what we're taking to the Growth Management Task Force. So if, if we, if I think we get that to I, I guess what I don't like is the fact that we're taking something to them. I'd rather take this and say this is what we're looking at. <laughs> yeah. We haven't approved it. Do you have any thoughts, comments, or suggestions? And then once we come back and, and approve it, then we can we could say we could take their recommendations or not take the right, recommendations, right. and then they can <coughs> go on. then they can have their course of action and have ours. Yeah, I like Clarence's proposal. Okay. Okay. In terms of the findings, uh, we'll start by giving you a quick overall uh, results, and then go into each variable. So this is an example for a single family townhouse category. So in this case, the generation rate decreased some, which has an effect of decreasing the fee. Cost increase compared to the last study, and that has an effect of increasing the fee. And credit decrease, and that also increases the fee. So the overall effect was about 7% increase in this category. Um, we have several elements that we go through, starting with inventory, service delivery, cost credit, and so on. So in terms of the uh, inventory, we are only including the traditional public schools. Uh, the study does not include charter schools, private schools, any of the other type of schools. So there are about uh, altogether 46 schools in the inventory. We don't, we don't include the, the students who go to the charter schools? We don't schools include anything either. related to Both charters. the asset and the, and the students. Uh, when we look at the uh, facility costs, we look at uh, the square footage per student station that the school district is likely to build upcoming schools, so these are based on future prototype. They're also pretty consistent with the current inventory. <coughs> so is they range <coughs> anything from 128 to 132 square foot per station. Is the charter school not including them? Is that your approach or is that the legislated approach? To it's, it's legislated in the sense that you cannot use impact fees to build charter schools unless you can show that they are mitigating a need. That no, 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 not the impact, not what we're using the fees for is not including the students in the counts. It, it's, that is a general practice usually. You don't, the school district is not in control of charter schools the same way as the traditional No, no, school. I get we're not in It reduces the student generation rate, <laughs> and if we don't, then we're going to have a higher student generation rate than students that are coming into your schools. So it's just, it's just yeah. something you should. So, what if all the charter schools shut down tomorrow? That's my question. Is or, have to absorb or all they're full students. and they don't yes. build right. another one? Yes. How do you? So is that why the numbers? No, we just. Can't, I don't think. I think legally, if we charge new development for students that they're not creating on the average, I would have a hard time testifying that these fees are ten percent higher because charter schools might shut down. 
I, I just so, don't feel. No, no, we got 20% of our kids in charter schools. Well, so we get 100 new kids come here. We do we need 80 grade. student stations or do we need 80? 100. Okay. Only, That's my uh, the question what you need, what you might need in the future versus what we want to include in the fee. We do not want to charge a new home for the public school system at a generation rate that is higher than what's showing up to does, the schools. Does your study include the fact that we are, will be paying a uh, part of our capital dollars to charter schools for their building and that number will go up? Well, it reduces mm -hmm. the No, that's the reason, but yeah, yeah. No, it does not make any. <clears throat> But so and even though it's all it's capital dollars, it's millage two pockets. Going to pockets. But that's, they're factoring in millage and, and yeah, the cost. We, so what, the what we are doing, you'll see it when we get the credit, but we are looking at how the school district is funding schools, to traditional schools, <coughs> and basically looking at past five years, next five years, and then based on that, we give a credit. Um, so if, for example, part of the capital dollars go start going to charter schools, that credit will decrease over time because there'd be less funding for traditional schools is the idea. The fee would go up. Yeah, yeah the fee, exactly. But that's already legislated. But that's already now. happened. It today. is, but right now the only credit we are giving is for debt service. And debt service you will pay one way or another. I don't think you can get out I of it. I think we've got a new big cost that's being taken away from us. That's <laughs> got to be factored into the credit now because we know it's legislated. And it will get higher each year. I don't think we wait five years to adjust for that. So. Right. Or whatever the next so if what's is. likely to do it will probably affect more your maintenance dollars or I don't I mean, think you're you gonna not pay your debt right, because of that action. Be that action is gonna mess up your operating more than it is your debt. Because your debt's your yeah. debt, unless you find another source. But we'll look at it, we'll make a note, we'll recheck it. But I think we're okay because I think everything you're doing is using fees and only using taxes to pay debt. And I don't well, think that debt is tax. I know it's a tax, but only the capital part of, part of it that builds new schools okay, right, goes to the credit. Right, so if you're using fees and only paying debt and not selling anything new with taxes, what's going to happen when they do that to you? Your debt's not going to go away, which we're only we're giving credit for, and your, your credit's going to go down, and we're probably you may be undercharging over the next. When you do an update, your fees might go up a little bit because of, of not having enough money for for something, I, I don't know, but right now, you got that debt, and new growth is paying, a millage rate is paying for that debt. So I think we're okay, but it'd be something as- New is that growth is paying for the debt? You'll give them the credit for the- Okay. So part of the revenue you get to pay for debt comes from new money generated by new construction. And that's the part okay, we get. Okay. Right, <laughs> and that had, we have to legally get that. But now there's less of that money to it pay It will that. be over time. But I, I don't know if you're going to reduce your debt payments at all and the taxes to it. I understand. It's probably going to really jam right into your operating maintenance. Yeah. maintenance. Yeah. That's why I think we're okay. We kind of checked that. But we'll check it again because mm -hmm. that is an inter interplay going on there. Because yeah, if you will, it's $3 million, then what? $5 million, then $7 million. I mean, but that's, I think, a, that's I think a big what, chunk. What you're saying is if we were using our millage to pay for new school construction, then it would have a different impact. Right. right? Because we're not doing that, it's not impacting our, the costs for us to build new student stations as much. So what would have happened, for example, if you were planning to spend $30 million on a new school and now maybe over the next five years, because some of the money would now be not available, you would take seven years to build that school mm -hmm. and then the credit would go down. Right down. But, but even since last two studies before that we've, we've been involved. The school board's policy was to use impact fees for new construction, except there was already a debt service that they would have to pay that had some capacity built with it. And so. new growth is going to help pay for that debt with new increased revenues over time. So that's the credit they get, is a debt credit. I think for you, we're in, we're in pretty good shape with, with that legislation. You're not in good shape. The new growth <laughs> is adding more debt, not paying for yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's another issue. Yeah. So then uh, the facility cost that we are looking at includes all costs necessary to build schools, so construction, design, site preparation, and so on. And the construction cost uh, will, is based on any ongoing or recent bids, uh, insurance values Sorry, of the existing buildings, and then the cost information from other jurisdictions. So um, we had... Okay, so we had two recent bids, one for middle school and one for a high school. 
and uh, they range from 155 to 197. And then we look at the insurance values, even though they are considered conservative, because you are not insuring the full building, the foundation, and so on, don't need to be insured. But at least they gave us some indication of the low end. And then we also looked at the range of other Florida jurisdictions, what they are building, and that's from $100 to almost $200 range. So given this, uh, we felt that like 150 for elementary, about 155 for middle, and then 180 for high schools. But by um, using that number, looking at this right off the bat, we're shortchanging ourselves by <coughs> in, every, in all three. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So hundred. It's not going to start costing less. So 155 on middles is basically matches the current 150, bid. 156. Right, 155, 156, right, $1. Well, 155 isn't 156. I'm not that smart, but I can see, yeah. I can tell that. Yeah. And then, and then the 150 is elementary schools tend to be slightly cheaper. And then the high school, um, so the bid is 197 I think we were closer to that and then I think the group felt that it may be like when you look at other jurisdictions that's kind of a high end um, and it's only one bid maybe it's too high so we sort of reduced it by about 10 percent to be on the conservative side and what's the state what does the state say those numbers should be so you are right. I, I'm going to show you that. Uh, by the time we finish it and compare it to state cost per station, you are almost exactly right at the state number. So we, we have we have 20 years worth of cost data. We have cost data in the last two or three years from everybody. And then when you go out and build one school, we're very careful because that could have come out $130, you know, or 200. I mean, one school is not a big sample size. I mean, we look at it, but I, I just wouldn't I just wouldn't pick one school out of statewide data. Geographic data and take that one school and break it up. We're only ever going to build one high school at a time. We're not well, going to build 30 high schools. Yeah. Well, you, well you, you build one high school for every four elementary schools, but yeah. again, we, we, it's just, I think it's just. So we think our new high school is going to be $20 think, I, less I, I, I just, square foot again, than the one we just built. Let, okay. Let's say it again. One of the things we consistently on, do is we, we see ourselves sitting in front of a judge having a conversation about being reasonable, but not so reasonable that we can't get done what you want done and sitting there and saying well we got 20 statewide bids and this is one of the highest ones we got until we said the next 10 years use that number we just feel comfortable with that minor adjustment uh, now, so we're going to recommend that yeah and then when when we get to the, the couple slides later we show it how it compares to the state cost so it's within like three percent of the state cost Which so high school number is almost ten percent less than what we're spending what, we're, what our actual costs are right now for one bid and it's a bid it's not a I think, I don't know if it's a contract yet. Yeah. I mean, it's, it is one bid. I mean, if you were in business and you had 100 clients and all of a sudden one, one client paid you 20% less or 20% more, you wouldn't change your, your number. So I'm just telling you, we, we don't feel comfortable. We'll make it 10% higher. Well, I guess the question I'm asking is you say it's one bid, but yet well, this, so did you look at the other current bids that this same builder has in other counties building a similar building? Yeah, yeah that was good. We just went through a whole process where we talked about our high school costs cheaper than all the, the three high schools that Orange County have built before. The ones that they just recently bid. But if you look to down here where they've looked at this comparison of other high school one numbers, one it's kind of right in there. It. it is a more conservative approach that you? came out of some conversation both with staff and with the stakeholder group. Um, and you know certainly well you know let me give you also one other piece of information we originally estimated this I think one what, what do we say 195 was it or I thought it was 185 190. 190 190 thank you um, it was at 190 and when we lowered it to 180 it had an effect of 3% on the fee like so it's, I don't it's not a significant effect Is market way. here on a 70 million dollar school it's over three million dollars <laughs> <laughs> when we build a high school at Neptune on Neptune Road in five years, what's it going to cost? 180 or 197? <laughs> 220. Or 220. Right. No, no. Come on. I, I guess the problem that I'm sensing here is that you know. <coughs> I'm sorry, I keep breaking your for the, for the quote for the cost and this is why if we waited to the end, we could really. I, I, I know. I keep, going, keep going. Keep going. This is significant. You no. Know, get back to it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There's just there's a sort of. The average escalation is 3.14%. Okay, so, in, so, so 10% of the three years. 
We'll call it back up at the end. Okay, I have it. So we're going to be talking. We're going to be discussing the cost component. Just to okay. be ready. And I think so far the student generation rate, there was still some issues about that. Please proceed. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. So, in terms of land value, again, we look at. Uh, the future purchase estimates that the school district has, and then the exist value of the existing parcels, and then the again land any vacant land sales of similar size parcels. So the at, at estimated cost is about eighty thousand per acre on average. So when we then add all the other elements like the design and so on, site preparation and land cost and everything, the uh, total cost, the weighted cost is about $212 per square foot and $27,800 <coughs> per station. So, and when we compare, so then, <coughs> as you know, the House Bill 7029 required that you know the school districts build it at DOE cost and cannot use local revenue to up uh, increase it. So DOE costs do not include land. So when we exclude the land and compare what the cost per station is ending up um, being, the cost that we have about is about 26400 and then the DOE is 27140 So it's about, it's within 3% of each other. This is the, uh, this is what we're allowed, right? Yeah, you, 27, 139? Right. So you, you couldn't go over that? Yeah, well, not without penalty. I mean, Correct. It's should. interesting we really closed that gap from where we seemed like we were two years ago. Well, they've made, I they think the state it. legislature has right. really worked hard on construction costs. And remember, there is escalation, especially in our market. With no, no, I get, I get where I'm going. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe that's what's closed that gap. And, So we then take the facility cost per station and convert it to per student. And when we do that, we look at the ratio of capacity to enrollment. So school districts right now has about 10% available capacity. And if it was, a, if there was a policy to maintain that differential for operating purposes, functional capacity purposes, we could have charged for it. Basically, what that says is school district build enough stations for more than one station per student. And, and the fee would have been about 29000 The cost per station would have been 29000 But because the adopted standard right now says one station per student, uh, we, we don't add that increase. We keep it at about twenty-seven eight uh, per station. Whether we can use whether we can use all stations or not. Mm -hmm. I mean, you cannot put 2,000 students in a 2,000 student station school. Right. right, correct. Right, and and that's what it is. Like, it's, 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 <coughs> as far as the operation purposes, it's perfectly normal that you have additional. It's good. You, it gives you some flexibility. And if you made that into a policy that that will be a rate we're going to keep, we can't charge for it. But if it's the adopted standard is different, that's treated more like a temporary fluctuation, you know, up and down, and we don't charge for it. Now, in addition to school costs, we have transportation and uh, ancillary facilities like the maintenance buildings and garages and so on. So they are each about $1,200, $1,300 per student. Do, do we know? No, sorry, sorry, no. <laughs> I'm on Bible. Make some down. notes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, yep. So with all of these variables, the total cost per student is about $30,350. We then look at the credit, and again, that's any non-impact fee revenue contributions from uh, new development. And uh, like I mentioned, school district had the policy of using impact fees for new capacity, but we do have an outstanding debt service, and about 114 million of it is related to capacity. <coughs> so we give it credit for the remaining payments, and it's about $1,700 per student. Now, because this is all paid with ad valorem, tax revenues and the new homes tend to generate higher ad valorem. We uh, compare it for each of the land uses, the value of all homes versus new homes. And you see a differential mostly in single family and townhouses because uh, they have the, you know, the save our homes and cap homestead exemptions and so on more so than the other type of units. So we adjust for that uh, to account this additional. Does this have a rollback in it? 
This is just the taxable value, yeah. So if, if you own a if you own a home that's five years old versus a home that's thirty years old, on the average, the home that's five years old is generating fifty percent more money mm -hmm. because that one that's older on the average has this cap and all kind of things going on it. And that's all we're doing is measuring the difference between new construction for various reasons and and, and the and the average. We used to not see that. We, we got caught on that and said, hey, when I build this new home, on the average, this brand new home generates more tax revenue than sure. the average home. Now, it may be people with, with, the, with the transfers that we've got now, that's, that may over the time, may it may yeah. be, be brought down because I have a right to transfer and we haven't right. gone through enough of that. To, I, I, just, I don't know where we'll end up 10 years from now, but right now in your county, the homes that are five to 10 years old on the average pay that much different, not in maybe the, the actual value, but the taxed assessed value. So they're generating that differential. Where your rental property and other ones don't show that, that differential. <coughs> So then the net cost is the total cost minus the credit. So it's about 28, 29,000. Okay. Um, so this is just sort of kind of showing you the differential since between the last study and this study. So in the case of, um, in both cases, like for both single family townhouse and multi family, which is apartments and condos in the, under the current fee structure, you see a cost increase of about 5% credit decrease since last study because the debt has been paid off partially. So the total net cost increase is about 10 to 12%. So any differential in the fee, about 10 to 12% would have been because of cost credit and then anything else is because of the generation rates. Okay. So the student generation rates, as you know, we um, take the student addresses and match them with the property appraiser database to see what type of units they are coming from. Um, so we calculated the rates in different ways, like Dr. Page mentioned, that we did it under the current structure to have an apples to apples comparison, and now we separated each of those categories, and now we have some tiering in terms of size, and then we also did a by geographic area to address the short term rentals. So when you look at the generation rates that match the current structure, um, there's a slight decrease in single family townhouse, about 4%, multifamily condo increase about 7%, and now mobile homes, 18%. That mobile homes is a correction uh, because when we go to property appraiser, they <coughs> cannot verify the number of units they gave us last time. So they feel like it was overstated, so it was probably artificially lower but I don't know how much mobile homes being permitted, but that that's increases more of a correction of the data as well as actual increase. Um, then we separated- I'm sorry, can you, I need some further explanation. I didn't sure. understand this page before. I'm still there. Can you just walk through your headings and tell me what- Yes, yes. So the very first, uh, well, second column is the number of students showing up under each category. Um, so it's like 37,000 in single family townhouse, for example. And then we have the number of housing units. That's about 95,000. Okay. And then we just take the students and divide by the housing units. So that's per home is point. It's a numerator and a denominator, basically. Okay, I gotcha, I gotcha. Greater yeah. ratio. And then we had the last year, last study's number and then the percent change. But didn't I just see something that said we had a total of 50 something thousand, a little over 50,000 students? Right. These are the students that are tied to a residential land use. Okay. You have about three, four percent that's showing up in non residential land uses. And we don't charge for them. Like we don't put their burden on these land uses because they're not generating it. So it's basically. <coughs> So then we do the same type of thing for each uh, residential category, separating them. So you see, for example, single family detach. So single family townhouse combined was like 0.39. Single family detach is 0.41 almost. <coughs> and then townhouse is 0.26. So it's quite a bit lower than the average. Then when we do the same kind of separation for apartments versus condos, uh, again, you see the apartments being higher than the average and condos being lower. Now mobile homes are their own category. 
They're different, Deborah, than what you showed me the other day. Yes, they are slightly. Remember, I told you they were going to change a little bit. Well, they changed in the. Well, go ahead. <laughs> we then have the tiering. Uh, again, for single family, like the, we basically try to look at sizes, you know, every uh, what about 500 square foot or 200, like a, a bunch of tiers, and look at where the breaks are. And in the case of single family, it looked like 1,100 square feet seemed to be a break, so it's 0.33 versus 0.41. And then multifamily, like 900 square feet, seem like where the rate is changing is like 0.26 for the small multifamily and point. Four three three, um, and then we calculate the rates for the same type of categories by geographic area. So you see, in again, overall pattern is West Side is lower than rest of the county. So when we separate it, you know, obviously West Side is lower, and then the rest of the county is higher than the average slightly. Um, so again, for single-family townhouse, for example, combine the uh, in West Side area is about 0.2 almost. What is the definition of West Side? That's the short-term short rental overlay area. The whole area, including celebration. Um, yeah, we sent you the map. Right. Okay. okay. Yeah, in that area. Okay. Right, got the map. So you know, multifamily is 0.1 <coughs> versus 0.4 almost, and so on. We then have the same, again, type of like separated categories in West Side area versus rest of the county. And again, and on these ones, like for example, some of them, you, you see a sample size issues too, like the <coughs> mobile home has only 1,700 units and is ending up 0.43. You know, if you go this route, we probably want to recommend combining some of the categories and not necessarily charging them. And then again, this, this final one again, it shows the tiering in the west side and the rest of the county. So then, based on these generation rates, uh, we have the calculated fees under all these scenarios. So under the current structure, uh, the single family is going up about 7%, multifamily 17%, and mobile home 23%. And then when we started uh, separating the categories, then you see more fluctuations. The single family is about going up about 12%. Townhouse is going well, can down. Can you slow down this little? Sure. You just turned about six pages while I was still on one. <laughs> where, where are you? I can go back. Well, I'm on the page you are now. I'm pretty much lost. But go ahead now. I'm with you. Are you with me? Okay. So these are the separated categories. So then you see the fluctuations, like the single family detached is going up 12%, townhouse is going down 30%, multifamily is going up 80%, condos is going down 33%, <coughs> and home is 0.3%. And then the final one is the tiers. And again, you see the same kind of up and downs, like the small single family is actually going down about 10%, and larger ones is going up 13%. Um, and then again, multifamily small uh, is increasing quite a bit less than larger multifamily. Um, so we then get into the, by the uh, calculated rates by geographic area. So the first column is showing you the county-wide what the rate is for those categories. Like sing single-family townhouse, <coughs> combined rate is about 10896 in West Side, it would be 5,400, and then the rest of the county would be about 12,000. And same type of thing with multifamily combined is 7,100. In the West Side area, it would be about 3,000. Rest of the county would be about 11,000, and so on. And again, same type of thing for the categories. Um, you see the differential between West Side versus the rest of the county. <coughs> So, I think that's kind of self-explanatory, but, and then the very last one is the tiering again by geographic area. So the current fee of like 10187 will go to, um, 
actually higher in West Side, the small category. So those are the ones that we have small samples when we get to tiers and then also the wide geographic area. So we want to be careful. If we want to differentiate, we want to make that with the categories that we have a good sample size. Um, and then the final slide is the really giving you a comparison to other jurisdictions. Um, in, in the, I think we provided a full list of them, so this is not everybody, but uh, you can see some of the range from, uh, you know, anywhere from, I, I think in the full list we have it anywhere from like 2,500 to 12,000 or so. <laughs> so in terms of next steps is our, you know, your input today and the discussion and then we'll go from there based on that. <coughs> Mr. Chairman? Yes. Can I have some explanation of why I looked at some numbers the other day that had multifamily at 0.45 and now they're at 0.38? I mean, again, and, 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 and this might be a good time for Rhonda. Again, board, and, and I'm going to say it again, we are going to the Planning Commission telling them that we're building 300 apartments over here on 192 with an apartment complex next to it that generates one kid per unit, telling them it's going to be 0.38 kids per unit. That's not a good way to operate. And I, I don't know where the other 400 apartments are that have zero kids. I'd love to find them. Because how is that number coming down? If we know there's 421 kids and 420 units at Cobblestone, how does this number come out to, to 0.38? If you want me to get started answering, we, we do both uh, impact fees and we do master planning. Mm -hmm. And we don't use the impact fee numbers in a master planning because they're, they're all kind of case law. They're the average, just the 30 year life of a structure. Is the credit of the structure over the average amount of time and when you're doing planning that's not what's going on everything that you're moving to isn't what, where you've been so we'll have counties where they'll maybe using 0.3 for the impact fee and they're using 0.45 because in the suburban area with the larger homes with a certain types of product they're, they're substantially different so there's geographic variations there's growth rate variations there's just I mean all kind of things so when we're doing master planning or even develop review because because the case law says like we got to be careful we got to use the average we can't deal with lack of investment we can't deal with all these for impact, fee. for impact fees and yet for planning purposes and concurrency you can deal with whatever you need to so there is very common so, to have both geographic variations and and by age or size and it, I can tell you it's really interesting because we we thought we saw some trends that were very consistent and then we find each county you know we, we have counties that are much older and the new homes don't generate more students because a lot of older people are buying the product where we're getting to a, a younger county and, and you've got the 2,500 square foot house where maybe the average for the whole county is 1,200 square foot or, or, you know, and then we have geographic. What, what do you consider us, older or younger? Younger. Well, you're younger. younger. Your, your generation rate, you, you got three things going for you. You've got an extremely high generation rate. You're not getting older. Uh, matter of fact, you're getting a little younger. You, you've got a high generation rate. You have a, growth, a high growth rate, which when you have a high growth rate, usually credits aren't very high because you just don't have a tax base to take care of it. And then you've got a tax base that's not above average. But my question was, and, I, and nobody's been able to answer this yet, where are the 500 apartments <laughs> that, that have zero kids in them that allow that number to go from a full one to a .383? It may be, so that, so 30 year apartments may be. And eight, I'm sure they're there. I'm not well, questioning your methodology. Well, a 30 year apartments may be under 800 square feet. And it'd be a product you built from 2000 to 2005 or something. And you're not building 800 square foot apartments or 700 or less. And, and we have certain thresholds where you get a certain size and there's no kids in them. And you get another size and there's kids in them. We, we've got the average for everybody. So I don't know where your product is. I don't know yeah. the size of the apartments. The other thing we see is, is temporal changes. We saw with a crash going on, the student generation rates for a short period of time in apartment complexes skyrocketed. We had people who just flat out couldn't buy a home. 
And so for four or five years, we had kids moving into apartments. And three or four years later, it stopped. So it could be a temporal issue, it could be a geographic issue, it could be a size issue. Maybe going charter and schools. so all those th types of things when you're doing master planning or development review, you start running all those numbers and try to get better at it. But for impact fee purposes, we're not going to start coming up with impact fees that are temporal or, you know, or, or, or have these types of things. And we, we just can't. We just legally... And my follow-up was, though, talking about planning, and I had this conversation with Mr. Kruppenbacher, is but the planning commissioners are coming to us and saying, why are you telling us that these 300 apartments are only going to generate 75 kids? when we know they're going to generate 300. And I've said this over and over again. Why? And then I say to Mr. Krumbabacher, why can't we go and tell them, hey, this is going to generate 300 kids? No, we're bound legally. Mm -mm. That, that according to... No, no, we can tell them it's going I mean, to generate 300 kids in our expectations, but we're bound by the... But the presentation we have to submit as a public fees. document. Right, for fees. Yeah. Yeah. No, fees. But if but you're doing... If, again, I don't, I I don't know planning. Planning. Yeah. They can kind of do all they want with it. It's just for purposes of, of fees. Sure. We're bound by the study. I sure. think you have two different things going on here. And I think we perhaps as a staff have not taken advantage of the fact that we can have a different conversation for planning versus what we can have for the way impact fees are charged. But remember, too, that the, the student generation rate for multifamily has been offset by condo because that category was linked. But they have them separated in here, don't they? But if you look at this one where it says 0 .249, and uh -huh. what we've been charging in the past, Pretty it was combined as a category. I apologize that we didn't. Uh, put and on I guess one. just to go on okay. with that, and, and not to take up all the time, but, but if you condo the versus one, multifamily, is the county going to be able to? Is everybody that's going to come in and build a multifamily going to call them a condo or how to? Ownership. Nothing has to do with ownership, does it, Nilgan? Yeah, condos are individually owned. Okay. Right. Yeah. Those are pretty straightforward. Okay. Good. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Because there you see on the next page where it looks at the different categories separated, the condo generation rate 0.143 yeah, very low. compared to a multifamily, which is your 0.383. But multifamily has been getting credit for the lower student generation rates out of condominiums because that category was combined with the 2014 study. And that's one of the things that you know we're asking from you as a board to give us some direction in. Which way do you want to go? So there's 600 and or 6,410 students in 16,000 units, 16,700 multifamily apartment units. Countywide? Countywide. Okay. Do we do that by size also? Yeah, we did do it by size. I guess is if you look at size, you get below about seven or eight hundred square foot. Where are hotels considered? We did it by number. Where are hotels considered multifamily? No. Those, the hotel students come off of the study right. because they aren't tied to a residential yeah. property. So the residential properties yes. don't get the burden of those students. We only have um, hotels. Say, I'm sorry. Well, yeah. that was a question I had jotted down is the 55,500 <coughs> student population on current enrollment, including charter school students. Is that number intentionally low to offset what you're talking about? That only includes the charter school students that we provide transportation for. Right. Some They're, of our charter schools, we are not providing transportation. That that number is for transportation credits only. It, enrollment is about 50,500 or 600, something like that. The, the traditional school is 50, 50,000. No, 50, for traditional. Uh, 50, yeah, like 600. Or, yeah. Uh -huh. like, yeah. So 13, yeah, 50,600, and then we are charging for 49,585, and the difference is the non-residential kids that are showing up. Exactly. There are about 1,000 kids showing up in non-residential land uses. I, I, I would suggest if you want to have a conversation about fees versus planning versus also no, the I'm, review, I'm fine with that answer. That would be a, a whole, we could sit down and go, that was a whole, you know, discussion in itself, because they, they are different. and. And by court case, and what we're dealing with, they have to be different. But we you don't can, have a choice. Yeah, you can absolutely use different numbers for planning purposes are you that are actual purposes? based on new homes by yeah. area. We have clients who well, do that. That are actual. I thought that's what we're doing was a study to get us what's actual. I would well, yeah. planning purposes and impact yeah. purposes. Yeah, that's based yeah. on average. No, it can't be. I mean, you can if you want to, but if but if you do, you're gonna you're gonna find. Again, every every we haven't done yours, but every community that we have we have urban communities where the average student generation rates half the suburban. Oh, I understand the. And, and when somebody pulls a permit, but yeah, we can't charge. 
But you but, said, but you said up front that you know, you when you do this, you do this under the premise that you've got to have a defensible position. For you tell, yeah, yeah, you're right. But you're telling us, for planning purposes, use a different number than what you're, what you're showing us now. Yes. Because we are using all homes and over the life of the entire house, right. whereas you are building schools for new coming development. Right. Over the life of it, it may change. Like I it may start that. point four, it may go to point so, two. But you don't have the luxury. So we to don't wait have the luxury to change based on demographic or uh, demographics, right? Word on yeah. what people are doing, changing. But yeah. so our planning department mm -hmm. can walk into a planning commission meeting. Mm -hmm and say, hey, our impact fee says there's only going to be 75 kids here. There's going to be 300. We want you to know that. Put it in writing. So again, you have to be yes. careful what you're using that for. Are you using yeah, that sort of is the answer I've been getting. Well, Ricky, the question is over what time for it. You know, if I, if I could just long term, I, I, yeah, I know that it was brought up earlier. Board member, excuse me, yeah. board member Booth, you have every right to provide that information to the county and say, here's what the impact fee study we're bound by, but we want you to know here's the experience of what goes on. And, and then whatever they okay. want to deal with very on that carefully falls they got to deal with jurisdiction. <laughs> and that may actually be very useful. I, I wanted to go back on just something real quick. Um, so so basically I just want to understand this the, the important factor as to why we have a study that shows something that totally does not comport with what reality has been, at least in the short term. That's, that's it, just in a nutshell. I know you mentioned it earlier, but it, I, it just went over my mind. Maybe we just need to come back to that. So yeah, and again, I, would get, I think, again, it, because you might have, again, we don't know the details, mm -hmm. but I can tell you, when we, when we do some master planning, we find geographically some really strange things, and you start dealing with them. But you, you got to do a lot of analysis, make sure it's not one project or one product, or statistically to have... The outliers. The outliers like okay. and was whatever you're talking about an outlier right. and you run through it and right. I mean so it's a, it's a conversation itself but we, we go through the impact fee we go through master planning and we got some that are actually dealing with concurrency and they're, and they're actually charging a, a different thing and every, each one of those topics because I've, I've testified in court you got to be very careful with because the case law and impact fees got one thing that you just cannot do some things in impact fees that you absolutely have the right with timing, phasing, and conditions because you cannot charge a developer for the lack of investment in your current conditions. The courts have ruled that. Get, you know. And I'm not even talking about the charge. I was talking about just the, the correct right. number, yeah. providing, so providing a correct the, number. The difference is impact fee is for the life of the house. So you pay the fee in the beginning of the permitting and then you don't pay anything the rest of the time. So it has to be an average that reflects the changes. So that's why we look at all homes. So that's looking at homes that were built in 1950s all the way through now. Whereas when you are planning, you are trying to look at past five to 10 years, what's going on and how the market is changing. It could go up or down either way, but like, so that's the difference. How far back does, how about, how, all right, so then, so then I'm, I'm still kind of, there's still some dissonance here. Sure, sure. Okay, so I'm thinking with what you just said, which is what I kind of suspected. But we've been a high growth co county for at least the past 10 years or more. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, chime in whenever you guys want because I haven't Over been paying 20, attention 15 to this. plus years. Okay, so then I still, I, I'm still kind of like, why is the analysis and the study is just so far off from what we're talking about here? And we use Mr. Booth's example. Why are we so far off by almost 100 and 20 percent. Are you talking about one project and one geographic area? Yeah, no, I understand that. I just, that, that's why my question has been many times, where are the 500 apartments with no kids? Because every time I drive by an apartment, apartment complex, it's full of kids. Yeah, in other words, so, saying is if we look back. So tell me, I want to know, and I'm asked everybody, well, first of all, where are the thousands I, I, of apartments I, I that have zero understand. children? First of all, I would check, are those apartments the average of, of the yeah. all, or are those pro apartments basically twice the size of what you've been building? I, I, I don't know. And two is that we had a time period, 9, 10, 11, and 12, that all kind of crazy things happen. And when you take this countywide multifamily generation rate and it goes up, and there's only been 10% added, well, that 10% added has got to be huge. Or some, somebody's moving around. I'm just telling you, you got to be very careful with temporal. Uh, that's conditions. Okay. I, that I, I don't know what you're. I don't know what you're talking about, but be very careful with it. Mr. Booth would expect 
as, as this study is showing, that we should have somewhere on the line, you know, communities similar to these that are showing the study that generate there the may be. The, that's the type okay. of thing. You check, there, you got, there may, there be. may be. If when you go out and do you know, geographic variations and you do all this testing, you might find that. But that's the type yeah. of stuff you've got to go through. Rhonda's looking for me. <laughs> yeah. She's going to find them. It hasn't yeah. been. It, it, uh, I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know what to comment on that. I understand the yeah. question, though, and I just wanted to make sure if there's anybody else who's listening well, in that. Let me give you well, one more Part of it is we're probably trying to misuse this data when, when, yeah, from a planning standpoint, that's well. yeah, that's and that might be the biggest point. issue. Yep. But when we give the county information like there's going to be 300 apartments, there's going to be 70 kids in them, that makes differences when they start looking at Correct. approvals or not based Correct. on school buses, capacity on the road. I can tell you 70 kids is a bus load, 300 kids, is five bus loads, and then when you take it in that they're not, <laughs> well, they don't work perfectly, it up, it's yeah. 12 bus so maybe loads. It's not the, maybe so that's you, not. So we're jamming up roads and stuff with bad difference. data. I know. It doesn't right. seem like this works well for planning purposes. Yeah. So, so we've got to separate. Okay. Yeah, well, and, I think, separate and I think that direction we, we certainly heard, and we've also gotten direction from <coughs> Tyndall Oliver as well as Mr. Kruppenbacher what we're allowed to do. Right. I think there was some misunderstanding among staff, which I'll take responsibility for. This has been a learning process for all of us okay. about what we can do from a planning standpoint versus an impact fee study process. If you're just and we have the, gone with some conservative numbers right. to this impact fee study yeah. out of respect for our stakeholder group and others in the community and just the simple need for where we are, but also understanding that we have real need. But I still go back to the fact that one of the biggest differences that I've seen as I've looked through this mm -hmm. is that difference between categories. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you look at the student generation rate for that multifamily condo combined, mm -hmm. it's like half of right. what it is if you separate multifamily versus condominiums. Mm -hmm. And you know, if you really think about it, that there are different types of multifamily developments sure. going up. And some of them are generating three kids per unit, and some of them are generating 0.5 kids per unit. Well, then that should get us to one kid per unit, not 0.38. <laughs> <laughs> so Rhonda, did you have those numbers just real quick that I asked you yesterday? To, so we can get off this development to the other development. But I only looked at the one apartment complex, the rest were single family complex. But you know, the development that's going over by the Sunrail station in Point Siena, 700 yeah. units, 300 multifamily, 400 single family. I asked Rhonda to, to, add, to put together the numbers to, to tell me the surrounding adjacent single family homes, how many students are being generated from those homes. To me, that may give us a better idea, and, I, and maybe, maybe, maybe not. What the number should be, and if it doesn't match here, then what are we doing? But from what I understand, you know? we can use that number from a planning perspective, mm -hmm. but we cannot but we use that number for, for an impact. <laughs> yeah. to, to build the schools that the kids are going to go to. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Not unless no. you're going to start yeah. creating a. No, no, no. Again, things you deal with the 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 this, when we have choice and kids are moving around. Sure. And you start doing those geographic fees, and you're charging this home where no kid is going in that whole geographic area, and they're going over to some other school because you have to build something. It, I'm just telling you, for, from our perspective, you really need to be careful. We did we did some quick looking at, at and you are kind of unique. You, you're usually there's a huge difference in older home sizes and newer home sizes in a lot of counties. It looked like your county didn't have a lot of development in the, the 20s, 30s, and 40s, and 50s. I, I don't know. We were looking at this. And the average size of all homes and the average size of new family. homes is a little different than what we thought. And the average value. So you got to take the county and its developmental patterns and, and how it's developed to see if you can, can figure out why the average is one way and growth is another way. And you just get into that carefully and then you use that for either development review or planning. But we're not going to go back and take that average and deal with you know some some temporal things that are going on and start trying to charge these you know high change differential fees by geographic or whatever. I'm just very uncomfortable with that. Just and to I, push back a little bit, at what point is something not temporal anymore? What time period? Well, well we t we'd like to take the the countywide average as the safest. Yeah. Yeah. If you're not going to take the countywide average for impact fees, because it, it, just the, the, I, I can tell you the average size of homes in the last year, 10 years, and some counties are trending downward pretty dramatically. You know, it went from 25 to 3,500, and, and all of a sudden people are starting to be a little more careful, and the sizes are trending downward. 
So I'm taking a 30 year impact fee. And I say, oh, these homes are 2,500 and these homes are 1,500 and you're gonna charge X. We just gotta be better careful. Veterans trimming, tr uh, trending down or just yeah. the size it's, of the It's tapering, home. not trending downward. It's t d definitely tapering. And again, size. that varies by county. Size. Every county is a little different in terms of that. So I'm just telling you, if if we're going to if you're going to use those, we got to do some dramatic analysis to say that we're looking at a long term. But is the answer fee. then 30 years? To your point, we're, our average, our, our we use a countywide average. No, but he's saying when is it not normal? I think when we look at for planning purposes, we try to look at a. Ten, 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 ten year decade. Period. We look at we look at we look and at we, ten year decades to see what's going on. Uh, I'm eerie of this last ten years just because of the ups and downs too. So like, we kind of you want to be super careful. But normally, like if you see a trend, it used to be a lot more normal fluctuations, and then we went through that huge yeah. construction and downturn, and economy foreclosures. It kind of upset yeah. everything. We'll, we'll go from 1970 to about 2000. And, and then we don't. We try not to look at two, 2002 to 2008, and 2008 to 2011 is, I mean, it's just crazy. So we take that 30-year period and we draw a line, and then we look at the last four or five years, and it's like we're getting back to a trend line. I mean, that's the kind of stuff you have to do for planning purposes. You really need to understand, you know, the developmental cycle, the long-term trends, and be very careful. And I can tell you from a planning perspective, from 2002 to 2008. And from eight to about twelve, values, sizes, where people are, that last ten years, I, I, I won't even use it. I don't want to use it at all. So that, and that's very odd because we've been planning for many, many years, and to take a ten or twelve year period and have to cut it out to do your strategic planning is really awkward. So again, you really need to. It's a whole conversation itself. And then and we do it for planning, which you need to do, and affect your five or ten year pl plan. And then when you get into development review, you got to go through, I mean, you really got to go, go, go through an analysis to be careful with that in terms of trying to project even smaller sample size. But we feel very comfortable <laughs> that we've given you numbers that are defensible, they're reasonable, uh, and they're not going to be responsive to to you know the last it won't fluctuate as much as yeah, yeah as especially much. given what we've been through again we got about a ten we got a decade two thousand two to two thousand twelve I don't know if you've ever seen that your your tax base I'm not sure we're not as squirrely today as we were in the middle of all that either yeah. Yeah. well mo most counties if you look at the tax base and all and you you run a thirty year trend it's and you look at what the state's doing the tax base is almost trending back they are not yet. You, 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 I mean, like you're, you're not there, you but most counties behind. are trending back to that to that trend line without the 2002 to 2000, and and w what we're seeing statewide is statewide the trends that way, and it's still different by county. Yeah. And where are we trending based on that? You are a little behind. Or it's what we would say if we're doing your revenue projections for your tax base, we'd say you're behind and everybody else is rather than getting the three or four percent we did for 30 so years. So they've caught back up. Your yours. You my guess is you, your, your tax base changed 10 or 11 percent then. I, I'm just guessing. I haven't looked at it where everybody else is six or seven versus four. Yeah. Because yeah. you dip, you probably peaked more right. and you crashed That's more. Far bigger dip and we're getting mm -hmm. killed with the. Correct. Well, you probably have, have you also have probably a maybe a bigger. I saw most of the bigger dips have a higher peak too. Mm -hmm. sure. The reason the dip went so far below the line is the peak was up there too and, and people were just scared to death. And each county is trending differently. Now the state does kind of an average projection. We look at every county and look at it. And so again, I'm guessing, but I'll, I'll bet you're averaging your tax base increase a little higher than you're starting to trend up a little faster because you're behind. But so that's the type of stuff you got to know when you're doing planning and projection and that type of stuff. And for, we, we for, just can't, we just, from an impact fee perspective, we need to be very careful. For Osceola County, I would be concerned about looking at, and I, I know you just said it maybe even as a passing date, but I'd be concerned about using 1970, 19, early 80s numbers um, for what's happening now, even if you take out the 2002 to 2012 right. decade. Um, there's a lot that's changed in our county with growth and development after the early mid 80s. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and if you use those earlier years, I think it is going to skew the, the data. The other part would be, at what point does 
and in what regard for Osceola does the methodology have to be different? Not all things are equal. Mm -hmm. So we look at coastal areas of the state, we look at the central areas, we look at some of the panhandle areas, and some of the areas that are right here in central Florida. Are we taking a methodology that's used across the state or across whatever areas you work in and trying to fit Osceola into that? Or are we really looking at the uniqueness of Osceola County and saying, we need to build a methodology based upon what it is we've been seeing as a reality of what's happening here. I don't want to, I would be concerned about trying to put a square peg in a round hole and saying, well, this is how we've always done it, so this is mm -hmm. how we do it. And that's not meant offensively as much as it is to say we've, we've got to make sure that we're really applying the approach to right. what it is we're really dealing with as opposed to just saying, well, this is the way we always do it. We may not fit in that little perfect right. box. Well, I'll get out and try to answer that question. So we're, we're, look, we're looking at all the counties. And before we start doing the calculations, I look at your growth rate, your tax base, and your youth and your generation rate. And, and, and you say to everybody else, well, if the average is five or six, seven thousand for a single family home, I go, oh, you got a high growth rate, you probably got a low credit. So the methodology has got a lot of background in terms of, of common sense. So you have a low credit. You're a young county, you probably have a high student generation rate. We did it, we did the tests, and you have a high generation rate. So, you know, so, so, we, so we, we, we use the same equation. But we're very careful of checking things for common sense. And if, if we'd come out with a 0.25 for a student generation rate in this county at, at your average age, I'd have said, there's something wrong with the data. Okay. So we try our best to use the right process and then make sure we're being very responsive to your local, your local conditions. That's all, all, all we can do. I have a note on my back in here about the credit that I need a lot more explanation on it but rather than do that can you give me or probably the board I guess if they'd be interested a one-page document okay, with bullet points this is why on the things you're just talking about that you're a young county um, you're generating more students because you're right. because of your age very simple terms not right. all the data but these are kind of the basic ten assumptions that are driving your credit portion to right. be so low. Right. Can you do that? Yeah, we can tell you why we assumed you didn't have a lot of tax money to spend on it. Now, you might have when did it, but yeah, we can tell you I mean, those, that would be we put those words. Like, I think the average student generation rate statewide is what, 0.3? Mm -hmm. And you're 0.45. That's 50% higher than the average for the whole state. We can those, that's that. what I'm looking for, okay. those things that we yeah. can start to put together right. a story quite frankly, not just for impact fees, but for, right. for some other right. things too. And I think your average value per person, I, I don't think probably you're very the, low. I don't think you're in the top 50%. I think you're in the, so your average tax That's value the per data person that I'm is lower. For. And we got all that charted for all 67 counties and even trends telling you, you used to be ranked, well, if, you use, if you're ranked 40th in taxes, we can tell you 30 years ago, you were ranked 20th and you're losing ground, or you're 40th, but you used to be 60th. We can give you both where you're ranked and your tax value per person, your student generation rate, and where, you, where you're where you trending in that rank. And we we'll look at all that stuff before we... Sure. Simple. Yeah. So we can give you... We'll give you some of that information. No, I need one page. Yeah. I think we need most of that on one page. What font size? Yeah. yeah we I don't do. care about that. Yeah. You can so make it small. Yes. You have to get too small, you have to read it to So you. we can put that. We call it a profile, and we can do a profile for you all. Yes. Okay. I'd, I'd like to go back to the $180 a square foot for the high school. Oh, so yeah, construction costs. Versus what we actually just spent on the high school, that we will be more next time we go to high school. You didn't spend that yet, right? That's a bit. No, we're spending it. No, we're spending it. It's in construction right now. Oh, okay. It'll be open in 10 months, 8 months, 7 months. <laughs> 11 months. 11 months. Well, July. Yeah, July. Oh, so. We're gaining on it, whatever it is. <laughs> so what, what is Mark? What is the actual cost per square foot? It, it is one hundred ninety-seven dollars a square foot. Is that yeah? There was some estimation there. Yeah, it's, it's around two hundred dollars for high school. Two hundred dollars. Uh, average square foot cost. Is that? That's uh, auditorium or expensive spaces, kitchens. That's a high school. That's a high school. <laughs> but is that just the construction without the design and FFNE and everything? Just the construction? Yes, that's, that's okay. just the construction cost. That doesn't include any 
I don't mind revisiting that. He's got he's got to convince me that there was nothing unusual. There's, you know, he didn't do something in that high school. He may not do in the. I mean, I, I don't I don't mind going through that conversation again. Uh, well, and the, only, and the only reason I bring that up is to change that number down when I already assumed that our number was already low. Um, compared to the data, the data that we had received from other counties and what they spent on their high school construction was some some counties were significantly higher than what Osceola County spent. So to bring a number down, you know, twenty dollars, um, seventeen dollars, whatever, um, that we know that as this impact fee uh, schedule is implemented is actually going to go up from where we are now. Uh, you can you can convince us. Well, we'll have another conversation and. And we just got to feel comfortable that somebody. I mean, maybe I'm missing something. Somebody just got to nail that that three or four percent is worth having that conversation because you feel really comfortable that it's reflective of the next one you're going to build. And I'll be fine with that. But I, yeah, we'll have one it's more. Getting, it's not getting cheaper. No. And and not only that, but you could actually you, you could guarantee increases just based on new technological design. Mm -hmm. School boards wanting you know to deliver education differently. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it's almost like a paradigm shift when it comes to school construction. Mm -hmm. And, you know, playing, this is just not the area to play a safe. I agree with Mr. Booth. What you're going to see is, actually, we had a middle school that, you know, in a workshop, you know, we realized all of a sudden that it was under um, estimated by, I don't know, $6 million. Six, seven, okay. Yeah, I mean, and, and, um, and that number and, is and, reflected and, and, in, in these new numbers, correct? And if just one thing <laughs> about this board that they're really in tune with is construction mm -hmm. and what it costs and the whole process. So, you know, it, it this, this kind of just jumped out. And I want to be lean and mean in our construction costs. I want to be doing the best <laughs> the best that we can do. I don't want to talk about, right. but I, I also, again, with the numbers, and that's is. why I've harped on these right. these generation rates that, that it just blows my mind. Mm -hmm. that they're so far below what I'm actually just see anecdotally driving around the community um, that why we would why this board would sell themselves short on the construction costs um, and maybe I'm missing something I don't know what I'm missing but is there a high school anywhere that's been built for $180 a square foot oh yeah there are several yeah. we got but counties that are having to build them bigger they're having to do different type of construction and they're working their butt off and dropping bigger costs. than 3,000 students Oh no, I didn't know yours was three thousand. Mm -hmm. When you yeah. just built with three thousand, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. no, and, and, and comparable to Orange County, and no. they had built three <laughs> schools. I didn't know that was three thousand students. The <laughs> same, um, the same mm -hmm. size schools, yeah. and building them for what, what was it, ten percent more, fifteen percent more? I mean, what, what was it? It we was, it was a substantial number. We did better. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, we'll again. Well, if you've already moved to three to Brownsville, I didn't know that. That's that's, that's one of the things people are doing is they're getting bigger and bigger to reduce the. The yeah. calls for station. Yes. Mm -hmm. Sure. All right. Can I stop? Was there a question on transportation, Mr. Booth? Oh yes. Yeah. I well, I was just. You wrote it down too. Yeah. Right. I was going to ask, what does our transportation and maintenance costs look like? Um, state average. Since we're talking about state average, kind of comparing ourselves to the rest of Central Florida, to the rest of the state, what do our what do these numbers look like? Do we know? Do we have any idea? You know, is Orange County spending twelve hundred, thirteen hundred? Are they spending a thousand? I mean, what? Is it we don't. We just. We don't yeah. know. I don't have that number off the top Did, of my head, but I can certainly get it. You guys don't. We can put a table yeah, together. Yeah. I don't. I don't. And that was more kind of aside yeah, from this, just right. to know yeah. how we were right. doing in this area. Yeah, I, it seems pretty much in the it? ballpark, but like we'll give you a better data of, yeah. like, of the ones that we. Need to go back and check. They how, are usually like. Right how does this number compare with the last study? Ah. Uh, I think it's actually. I have it. Let's see. So when I got, I know you're on transportation, but I got some housing questions still. Last study was $991. Oh, cool. So it went up $991. Oh, cool. so it went up. Oh, cool. So it was like 12 nine. So it went up some. About 20%. 20%. And that's per student? Per student. Wow. And that's per student. 
Um, last time we did this three or four years ago, we had a big ride around conversation about uh, short term rentals not generating much or being its own category. I realize you've looked at the west side overlay, which covers things like it rolls in a lot of stuff that doesn't fall for this uh, that we know isn't outside of that category. Um, I think we all agree that short term rentals can eventually start generating some students, but maybe not early on and maybe not at the same rate. Did we do anything in this study to look at that? In this study? Yeah. Short of the whole west side overlay? Just the west side. Yeah. See, because to me, that's that west side overlay <coughs> covers a tremendous amount of things that are not short term rentals as far as residences. And I think, I mean, that was a big question for developers last time around and uh, I'm just curious why we didn't try and divvy that up more or dig into it a little more. Maybe that was did. an issue we raised last time is that that geographic area is way too large. Yeah, it's not. It's just way too large. Yes, here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got a lot of just traditional. Yeah, you Oakland. got a tremendous amount of just traditional resident, whether it be single family, multi family or not. What's the purpose of of you know of I mean how was this defined? I this think is it's zoning. You run 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 the can give you the background. But you, but you give us data all the time that says here's all these short-term rentals that have X number of students in it. Especially the older ones. Right. How, so so let me. So can only, be built there. only one follow-up right, question for Rhonda. But, so in here you'll but not have there either. you have properties that used to be short-term rentals but are now generating students as well. Okay. And so for the purpose of your study, you want to include those mm -hmm. in order. So, Board, Rhonda just told me the number. You know, I brought up another housing development. It was 500 and 543 homes. This is going to be right next to the 400 homes that they're going to build. 543 homes, 468 students. We're sitting here talking single family detached at 0.4 for our new number. That's half of what that community is going to generate when it's built. Half. Uh, you know, I, I get the methodology, I get all that. That's half of what it's going to create. Uh, the impact is half. And maybe part of this is back to your, the way you've chunked it up from that 70s, 80s, whatever it was, and then leaving. I think around 1980 there were 35,000 people in this county. There's 365,000 people yeah. since 1980. So what this county looks like today, what it looked like in 1975 is very similar to what it looked like in 55 and 35, and 40 and 25 probably. What it looks like from 75 to 95 is pretty different. And 95 to today is pretty different. I don't know if that's driving. Is this the graph here? Um, so is that, is, is, is that where that's coming from? I don't know. I, I'm trying to numbers. figure out. I, 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 can't I get with you, when we build something new, yes. it doesn't point seem point to match these numbers. And this and is, is what we're charging the impact on. Point right. Three. Well, and it goes back to. So these are, um, and then you have a point two, four two here and 95. Okay, and we, we can. I, I don't know, I'm like just throwing that out. The things don't look the same. We got, we got, I guess, almost year by year. It's generation rate. 50s. The whole homes that are this built in the 1950s, mm -hmm. not when they moved in. Right. right. Homes that are built in the 1950s have 0.3 students in them. That's the single family. Single right. Family. Right now, today. Today, that's the average home built in 1950 has 0.3. Uh, I guess maybe we'll uh, a, a, a house built in 1995 in has 0.4. 0.42. 0.42. And then, and then, and then it, it, it peaks at 0.4. Five, and then it starts down to 0 0.4, 0 0.48, and start back down to 0 0.48, 0 0.43, 0 0.42, and then 0 0.37. It's so it's trending. Been, we're going down, but you say we're a younger I, community. I, well, I'm just yeah. telling yeah. you that you got to be really careful because you've got the 2002 to 2012 data in here 
with homes that got built by people like they couldn't do anything but pay cash. Yeah. So I'm just telling you when, you, when you look at this data and you try to make some decisions about it, you got to be very, very careful with it in terms of what year it was bought, what the trend is, and if you're going to do this, somebody really needs to sit down and, and, and be, I, be fair. Be I know, I mean, I'm just, you're doing. <laughs> I just, it just, I struggle with this. And of course, mm -hmm. you know, the, ours is an average, so you're going to have really high ones. And no, I, ones. I get that. But every time I turn around, I'm being told about a community. You keep the higher ones. Yeah, uh, nobody, sh again, not one person has shown me <laughs> the 500 unit. <laughs> well, if you go and took a big square out of the middle of the state streets. Yeah. Sure, sure. Today, and said, yep. how many kids live in this it's half mile square? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Half mile square. Rhonda could probably do that. It's going to be shockingly low, probably. If you, uh, yeah, depend, I mean, depending on what you buy. Uh, but it, then you go yeah. to, what's that place called just south of town? Uh, I keep thinking plantation. That's not Harmony? Plantation. No, <laughs> Stevens Plantation. Stevens Plantation. Stevens Plantation. Yeah, yeah. And take an exact same mm -hmm. size and lay it over. Mm -hmm. it. I bet that number's way higher. Maybe that's where they're coming and up. Maybe with that the, uh, I don't know what that means, but it's square means footage. It deal. gets back to a lot of these older homes. Mm -hmm. I think are lived in by uh, older folks. That's my district. People that don't have children mm -hmm. anymore. As far as the student generation rate in so. the aggregate. How do they so, or there's, there's less without the there's those smaller state street types. Yeah, you know, well, three, I mean, I mean, that that between this year and the last right? study. Oh, that, um, makes sense until you say that was. I don't know. We had a chance. Yeah, yeah. Hold on. Let me just get to it. Where's the, all the kids coming from? Mm -hmm. If uh, when that's we, why I think if you take a square, if we compare it, apples to apples, as far as the category is the same, you see a slight decrease in single family townhouse minus four percent and an increase in. Like 7% oh, increase in multi family condo home Okay. Um, <laughs> so we're looking. At so the, yeah. The student generation rate in the aggregate is about 23%. It's, well, no, it's like it's, it's lower for the single family townhouse category and it's higher. Yeah. This higher is the way it's done right now. Okay. Correct. Right, right. If the, you, the, just to show the apples to apples. Yeah, like yeah no, no, I appreciate that. All right. Um, but we can also, I mean, I think we That's separated them last time as well, so we can do the categories. Do, do we have so some? We can put in the next slide, but I don't have a comparison. I okay. compare it to the higher, you know what I mean? Just, oh, okay. Yeah. Have we had any feedback from the county or? So if you look at the aggregate, it kind of goes wrong with what you're saying. What do you mean? I mean like a single family going look. down and multi-family going up. See? Oh, no, I yeah, I completely get that. Okay. But, but. But the two that I've looked at are a full kid and a .85 kid. Um, that's, and that's just a, a guess. I mean, I may be way off, but that's close. Yeah. And so, and, and, and we're building two, two new units right next to these two places that I've asked Rhonda to look at for me. I bet you money they're going to generate the, pretty much the same number of kids that are at the houses that are right next to them. Right? I mean, would you disagree with that? I think that's a logical conclusion. <laughs> Are you talking about single family? I think that's a reason. Are you talking about single family now or more? Well, you know, I kept because I kept bringing up the apartment when I wanted to make sure I found a different one. That's why I asked Ms. Blake to get me some data uh, on a housing development next to a one also that's uh, before the planning commission. So 560 some on homes or 20 homes, 520 homes, 460 kids. Um, and so. Again, the impacts are less than half of the two new developments that are before the Planning Commission now are less than half of what what I know, what I believe, the number of kids that are going to be in. They're multifamily, you said? No, no, one's single family, one's multifamily. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we're going with a 0.38 on something I know is going to be a 1, and we're going with a, a 0.4 on something I know is going to be a 0.8. Well, 2014, when we look at, at six, 1,700 units, not one mm -hmm. or two projects, it's point four, it's point, point four I get seven. it. Point four two seven. When you look at 2014, it's 2,000 units, point four. When you look at 2015, you look at 2,000 units, it's point three six. 
Three six five. So it? there may have been. Uh, but where are these four hundred houses that are being built that have zero we, one? We but probably show them to me. They're, they're I want to be know. built. They're that's already being lifted. That's all. They're already being that's lifted for all. Right. But yeah. okay. So the this. You're right. If you got some with one, you got a lot of. You got some with zeros, and the average is 0.5. Uh, and the bigger issue I've got is that we're using. The but nobody can tell me where they're at. I want to go visit them. them. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I they exist. Tell you, we'll go back and revisit that. I mean, one. that, I mean, that, <laughs> I mean, that that's the I appreciate. <laughs> I guess. So. I guess so. 197 is a real number for us. It's not going to go down. Collection <laughs> by you know year, what starting back in 14. Everyone <laughs> Here if you look at page about five. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I understand. Can we please number pages when we have yeah. 46 <laughs> pages? Clarence, I'm with you. It's the the impact fees collections by year. Um, Would it be possible, just as a little experiment, um, we know that we built 2,700 units, for example, in 2314. Yeah, there you go. I don't know there if you, you can go. find this data or not. Is there a way to know where those are and how many kids today are in those 2,700 units? No, no, no. And how many are in the 2,867 and the 4,137? Oh, gosh, that'd be a beast. I don't know. I'm just but you know what? That's a beast. But that's real, though. That would be interesting to so see how those numbers actually, fall right. into those categories. That would, actually, that would help with planning. The part right. But not for impact fee. Not for impact fee. No, I disagree with you. If, 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 well, I mean, that's what, if we're getting killed because the impact fee methodology that the statutes are telling us to use is invalid based on the growth and the decreasing age of our community is trending to, do we have an argument to be made? Well, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. How many kids? How many kids did we grow by in those those year periods? And actually, it's going to make it's actually going to make so it's actually going to make their argument better because it's what about fifteen hundred? And keep in mind, a lot of your growth was going to charter schools for a couple of years. Yep. This year is the first year that, that we now have in you our district schools forty three percent of the growth. We've grown over 2,000 kids again mm -hmm. this year from the same time, if you looked at the same day last year mm -hmm. compared to day of enrollment this year. We've grown over 2,000 kids. The district has 43% of the growth. Charter says 55% of the growth. A year ago, it was like 97% of the growth was in charter, charter schools. schools. We're mm -hmm. bringing those kids so back, that would which be I'm those, excited about. That would about. be those homes with better that, showing as zero because but, the no. children are going to charter. Right, right. We don't include charters. To be honest with you, that's the other thing we have to do. We have to plot out the charter students and see which geographic area. We have some counties that charter students have a massive effect in very small areas. We have some counties that charter kids are just scattered all over yeah. the county. And so if you're going to do a, that. And that, that's a by state statute that you have to take the charter kids out. And, and then we also have. We're not building student stations for them. We have it seems like it makes more sense to me to include them all when you yeah. say 17% of your kids are in charge of school. But you know what? We are helping them build student stations. Yeah. Yes, we are helping yeah. them build yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One, you get a geographic variation. And two, some counties that charter kids are almost 90% of them are like in middle schools. Some of them, the charter kids geographically are different. Can we charge the charter impact? Cool. 70, 69 charter so impact it, fee? It's, it's, I mean, it, it is calculated, isn't it? Um, How many different? Well, right, Rhonda, what was it? 1,500, 1,500 yeah. new growth? Let me ask you this question. Like the last couple years? In light of the new legislation that says that charter schools are entitled to a portion of tax dollars. So that we makes about that. That's going to affect your operating budget. You're only spending taxes on debt right now. Bye. No, what we were saying is right now the credit that we are giving, I don't know if that's your question. Can you finish your question? You said um, charter schools are going to get dollars. We would get that for capital. That would be an interesting number. So why are they not calculated on an impact so at this point? So originally the thought, there were like two reasons. One was we need some direction. Yeah, direction on how, even how are we want to talk about when they are built, how they are built. So this is not really, they were like a past three agencies. And secondly, there is a statute that says we can only use impact fees on charter schools if it can be shown 
that oh, is mitigating an absolute need that school district cannot fulfill. I can give you that. So that you can spend it on and you can control the building. So there was no reason to include that because even if you collect for them, you can't tell somebody to build it here or you can't spend on it. So you can't really collect for it and then not spend on it. It was a little bit of an offset. Now we took in about the same number of students as went back to charters or went to charters. So I don't know now with the new legislation, would they change that? You know, what about going make it more seamless. But right now, would be that we would continue to gain ground. Well, the problem is that's going to be a challenge. The problem so is that for the so progressive right. impact of these studies, you can't look forward. Yeah. Right. You have to look at current data as an average. So that would then determine how, how soon in the future we would look at the study again. Yes. And keep in mind, board, that this is an investment that the district has made to update the study. I understand that it's not perfect. It doesn't give us a lot of new information. But all total, right now, we have about $81,000 in the study. Okay? So it is something that we've, I think, looked at pretty carefully. What I've heard from the board so far is that you want some additional data about the impact fee collections, those units, and what, those, what they actually generated in terms of students. We want to look at that cost per square foot of high schools per student station. I apologize for the high school number. You feel like we've been a little bit too conservative there. But then we also need, and you also want us to go to the growth management task force before we bring something back to the board as a recommendation. But I'm not hearing enough discussion to give us some direction on overall which of these approaches this board is most comfortable with. Mr. Booth? I would like to hear categories. I'm not okay. interested in the separation based on size. I'm category. not either because I think it may drive no. behavior we do not want. Yeah. Such as what do you mean? Bifurcating the single family and townhome and the multifamily and condo, that's the right direction. I think getting into the square footed variations is not. And I, I would agree with, with your that. Point. I, what? I agree with that also. So I'm hearing consensus from the board that you want to stick with category. Do you okay. go with five categories or three categories? I like the five categories. Okay. Five is this one, right? Uh, the single family, townhome, multi family condo, and. Yeah, that's the west side. But, that one, but it's that the same one. breakout. Same category. Yeah, right. those five categories. Keep in mind that when we adjust the cost per student station for the high school number, it will go up slightly. All of these numbers, that's the impact that it will have. And then we need some direction if you want us to look at anything differently from a short-term rental. Obviously, the west side overlay is, is not the best approach, and I think Mr. Kruppenbacher can give you some advice in terms of how that works when you carve out specific regions with impact fee collections. But I need to hear from you all what you want us to look at differently there. What um, – I keep hearing the word you went conservative on these numbers, and you're conservative on these numbers, you're conservative on this number, you're conservative on that number. So what's the real number, you know? That, I'd rather be working with real numbers than, than having every number be quote unquote conservative. Um, you said, I heard the term conservative on transportation, conservative on maintenance, conservative on, on construction to the point where we're conservative on construction and lowering it at, beyond being conservative. So what was the reasoning for that and, and I mean, Maybe the transportation and maintenance numbers also need to be real as well and not conservative. Well, that's in the buses in here. We've got buses going from 140 to 160 to 180 thousand dollars. Yeah, the, the average we use was 162 thousand based but, on the purchases last five years. But they're they about 140 now, right? This, this is it. We can't give you that back up. I think we provided. But did, uh, you had a three year package. projection in somewhere. In so we're going to change the word conservative to reasonable? <laughs> Maybe some well, things. Well, I mean, it doesn't matter what the word is. Conservative to mean things like this means we've lowered the number no. because somebody wanted it lower. <laughs> well, but it wasn't. It was looking within the range. Yeah. You know, what I, made I the most, dis yeah. most yeah. sense yeah. in terms of being defensible? Yeah. yeah. And reasonable in what we were trying to do. I get do. that. No, I get we that. certainly want to pay for each other, but the cost of buses has changed, I mean, over the course of the five years. No, but has it gone up? Getting up to 160 when I started, I think they were around 120 or something. That, there was a thing I saw, and the cost I can't find it now, that had them going up about $20,000 a year as a projection each of the next three years. A bus? Yeah. 
And maybe they are. I don't and that's know. the thing. Maybe if the buses are low. We have been buying bigger buses. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And but we also are buying seat, right? air conditioned buses. And that's, I'm fine <laughs> with, uh, but we've been buying air conditioned buses for, be more since I've been on the board. So that's not a change. Yeah. Um, and and uh, I'm not saying let's buy the cheapest bus we can find with hard rubber tires on them or something. But part of it too is, is we are in a place where we're trying to buy more buses. Because you went well, through I, a period of time. We need a bunch of buses. I know, I know we, we do. I'm not questioning that. that. I'm just, just questioning if we're using the right. <laughs> even just the cost. age of our inventory, there was a period of time where they were buying like a couple of years where they bought like 50 buses. We had a bus driver We've been buying feet. 10 to 20 a year, and we've got catch up to do. We've had there. some years before you got here, we bought like eight. Right. On 400 yes. buses so does not again, work. That puts your fleet at about 35 years. Yeah. That's forward, so. part of the problem with the transportation cost. Right. I get that. Okay, that's that's fine. I wanted to know. Yeah, I think again we'll work on the word reasonable versus conservative. No, that's fine. <laughs> that's our, fine. Our goal, and I've seen it. He just changed word is, again. Is yeah. not, not to take five Problem components, cut them all yeah. by ten percent, and have the fee at half price. That is not what we're doing. Yeah, I mean no, that's no, not no, our intent. Deborah, from here, um, there's some additional feedback that the board wants, and we have a timeline set. But is it the right timeline? Or is it arbitrary at this point? Should we not reconvene as a board before there's anything else? That goes forward to growth management of the county after getting this new information. Is there a plan in place? I would I would suggest that we may need another hour of, of discussion mm -hmm. of workshop time after everything with the done. high school adjustment numbers. We'll look again at the transportation to get supporting documents. We'll get the one page bulleted kind of a district profile to give you a sense of where we are. Is there anything else? Can we do that? Is, if we do that no, next no, meeting or something no, at some minutes. point, right. I know that y'all have a community task force or something. I don't know what you call it. Um, when do we? When will we hear, as a board, anything from that group, or will we? Other than when we go to our final hearing to vote on it, where they have three minutes to talk. I would. I'm just asking. I would recommend that that next meeting you have the workshop type meeting. You have one where you invite input at that point, because to wait to the last public well, meeting yes, to, is to basically to. really tell them. Thanks a lot for what you want to tell us, but we've already Correct. moved yeah. down. Yeah, we got a vote in three minutes. Right, and and I think you let them come talk, and and mm -hmm. and advertise the workshop as one where you're I going to take your input. Group, Rob? Did you hear that? Or you may not have been. Next workshop, advertise it as one where there will be public input, and that's where everybody can come and present and talk about what the issues are. I want the five of us to hear. I know y'all had some public or not, but. Uh, Meetings meetings with the district staff i want to hear i can't speak to the rest of them i want to hear directly from you guys what y'all are thinking about this where you think the holes are from your viewpoint i think the uh, next workshop is too late for that i didn't hear the board ask staff to look at the west side with any particular focus i know that we're I, I asked to look at it from a perspective of the short-term rental areas but the board nobody else seemed to to carve out short to carve well, out. Well, to figure it out. I, I just don't. Oh, we I like had a lot of data three yep. years ago about it, and now we don't seem yeah. to seem to have yeah. dropped that data. Were we looking at that? We no. were looking at that. Yeah. I remember from the beginning that was going to be something we were going to take. Unless my recollection, we were going to take a very close look at how do we deal with the short-term rental issue. I know, Joe. I talked to you about it. How do we address it? Um, it was it didn't the question go back to if it's a deed restricted short term rental that's easy that's, that's so that's the except problem. There's, a, there's a reason they're not deed restricting them right no i get think no, i understand how what's going to happen when they go when the first family moves yeah no which I is going to happen i, I can tell you three developments that we've looked at as of yesterday february the 20 um compared to last february indian wells one of the older um, communities that started out as a short-term rental currently has 118 students how many, residing in the vacation rental homes. How many homes? Not vacation rental homes anymore. Okay. Yeah, they're homes. That's six yeah. less than there were last February, but I'm just saying that's Indian Wells, one of the older Do we ones. Know how many units? Yeah, how many Indian units? Wells? I don't have that information. It's big, what was, what was the number though you just gave me? You said was a short-term rental one. Your second number. It's off 535 Polynesian. Yeah, I know where it is. I, just, I don't know. Yeah, so there's a partial. Story Lake, 
has a set that's designated as vacation homes, currently has nine students. That's an increase of eight since last February. Story Lake Residential has 46 students, an increase of 26 students from last February. The Champions Gate Vacation Homes, we have seven students coming in. That was consistent with last February. And the Stony Brook Residential Group has 50 students, an and, increase of four students. And somebody the problem said is on. there's not a county designation that we've been able to find that says this, D, this community is short-term rental and will stay short-term rental. But then what was wrong that keeps showing us stuff? It's a list that she's developed internally in-house about how things were marketed and how things have converted. There's not that we've been able to find, Rhonda, correct me if I'm wrong, a specific county or state designation, designation for what is a short-term rental community. Is you guys right? tell me if I'm wrong, but we've not been able to find it. At least that's what I've been told by staff yeah. and Frank. <laughs> is there one? So there's, there's a, uh, the state has a definition of short-term rental. The state does. Of oh, the county? Yeah. The, but the communities, have, they can elect to do a kind of deed restriction, which would be a recorded declarant covenant saying you can't stay here for longer than 180 days. And those communities are now being designed without mailboxes with different trash and noise and parking requirements. So just to elaborate on what Dr. Pace just said, in the, nine, in the 660 homes that were closed in the two residential communities that she uh, listed, there were 96 students, which is a student gen of 0.145. That's non-short-term rental. In the same community uh, where they, there's a short-term rental site, and it's a reported covenant on the land. Can't escape from it. So it's not in the deed, per se, but it's in the recorded deck. There are 16 students being generated from 924 closed homes. That's a 0.017 student generate. So based on that, the developer in this case, which is us, has paid on average about $500,000 per student. But do those covenants have in there relative to they can only stay a certain amount of time? Is, are they paying a bed tax? Yes. Is there a, okay, is there a front desk? And are the covenants, do the covenants have a sunset or are they in perpetuity? I think these are good questions where we thought this was a meeting where we could participate. I, I, it hasn't turned out that way, but I think we're prepared to jump in and have that discussion. I, I think if a property is deed restricted and they come in and apply and they're deed restricted, you're not going to have a choice. So yeah. I'm, I'm not sure what. That's, we, I don't we get the covenant. The the last covenant time, I, mis I misunderstood, I think. That we heard from you. Yeah. They can deed restrict it, right. they've done, it's over with, and they don't pay fees. And if they don't want to deed restrict it, the covenant can be changed, correct? No? So a, a, a deed restriction says none is different than a covenant that says the primary purpose is short-term rental. Yeah. So, let me, I would propose, let's have them come up and talk yes. with us real quick so that we can have a dialogue about this. Now. All right. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Come, come up here and talk with us a little bit <laughs> about this. Whoever. Joe Brock. Show looks better than the box. And if I could just ask the can question. We story. Can we make some room? Let's make some room for them. And can we not have Joe sit next to them? Pull up chairs. Good luck. Yeah, if Clarence so would be nice, he'd give that lady there his chair. Do you mind, sir, if I ask a question? <laughs> I'm trying to get off my junk out of the way. So I think part of the question for work. us is, how do we and how would we advise the county to designate this community as different, as having a different set of impact fees than the one next door to it. It's going to be hard not to do it all in the short-term rental overlay with the way it's done right now, because that allows it. The other thing, what you're looking at, Indian Wells converted almost immediately. It didn't stay a rental. I mean, it, it was almost immediately primary home. I don't think that's an example that you can follow because there's so many that have stayed short term rental over the years. So you've got those old, old examples, and then you've got all of the new examples. So how do we fix the problem? You and I have worked together for years. <laughs> What's the fix? I, I Maybe when you're getting your SDP approval, 
is you, you're designating or, or your PSP, your short preliminary term. site plan that you're showing short term rental, right? Yeah, the, the, uh, the plat is now reading into the plat the recorded declaration, which has these covenants in it. Right. And, uh, and so with that comes certain design requirements. And really, it's three things it's noise, it's parking, and it's trash. So, um, with the movement by the Postmaster General of going to cluster mailboxes anyway across all developments, these short term rental communities aren't, we, we're not allowed to put any mailboxes in, not even clusters. So, if, if Mr. Chairman, you lived in one of our short term rental communities, let's say you slipped past all the covenants and decided to do that, um, at a minimum, the convenient inconveniences would be. You'd have resort level parking in your in your community. You'd not be able to get mail delivered to your home by the U.S. Postal Service. You would have um, a, a different kind of noise uh, develop. You know, you would be insulated from primary homes in terms of the buffering and noise, and you would be required that the county municipal solid waste they they will not allow you to even uh, use solid waste services for the county. They are requiring evidence that the association has engaged for something called valet trash. So you, you actually have to have a seven day a week trash pickup um, in those communities. So you're paying extra for trash. You know, the, the county doesn't won't allow you to do the normal solid waste services. You've got no mail coming to your home. Um, and you've got all these cars coming in all the time, which you can't stop. So um, you have bigger driveways. Yeah, more surface parking, more more off street parking, all that. So, but again, how does that help us if we're thinking about establishing a different set of impact fees for a specific area? If it's not geographically based, because clearly that doesn't work. The West Side overlay is well, hard. The West, on the approval yeah. per neighborhood. Per neighborhood, you wouldn't say an area anymore. You would right. say if it was fell within this definition of a short-term rental Th this, this uh, was the risk this gentleman and I have we've now been to about six dozen meetings together <laughs> on a variety of fees law fire you know right all of it and I think in your vernacular the west side designation is nice and clean and it kind of fits the description of what you try to do for fairness it's still pretty obvious what's going on in the numbers that the weight of not generating kids out of these vacation homes within that overlay is dragging down significantly generates. It's obvious. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a question based on that? If it is dragging it down, if you take these out of that the calculation, yes. does it drive up what's left? Yeah. yeah. yeah you Absolutely. I just want to make sure why, yeah. wouldn't, why wouldn't you create a short-term rental category, have the other whatever it ought to be, meaning driven up, and then deal with the short-term rental, whatever the appropriate resolution well, allowed to that. They did. They did that. Right. The west side, which is the short-term rental overlay, right. you see those generations are so much lower, even when you have primary homes all <coughs> in there. Your data, your data shows right. down here and the rest up here. It's but very you're treating different. it as part of an overlay. Yeah, as opposed to separating it out. Which so is why can, it's higher than maybe 0 0.01. Right. <laughs> so, why if, not so you can't, that's what I'm groups. saying, you can't have a, another category right here that says short term on it, yeah. short term rental? They don't know how to find it. The issue is the administration. I still don't quite understand and what you're saying, but if you come in and you've got a deed restricted 55 and year old, no kids. You don't pay an impact fee. The state restriction, and you're done. So if if that was if that's there, we're having a lengthy conversation about nothing. What I think I understand is that if those get converted, the county has no way of then saying, okay, you're no longer you're no longer no, I know deed that. restricted. We have this pay the fee. Last time. And if that was if yeah. that's there, we're having we're wasting almost wasting our time because they have a legal right to deed restrict their property guarantee the county that they're not going to have any kids and move on with What's us. The deed so I think, that hotels I think what we're doing is having a conversation that that's but not available and can you do Here's something Here's my concern with the deed restriction. I may be wrong. Am I wrong? That's, no, I, I, am I oversimplifying it? No, but can I talk about the deed restriction? Because yeah. I think it creates another problem for us. Sure. If we take these out of our calculation, right. it has an impact on what's left. Sure. If they just start deed restricting willy-nilly, it's not going to impact the ones that we have left. 
correct? As they, I don't think as they, they can really do it. As they, pull, uh -huh. as they pull permits yeah. and they start creating deed restricted property, we have deed restricted property right now all over in counties, and sure. they, don't stay, they don't generate students, and we don't have this conversation. Yeah. So, I mean, what, what I, I'm, just, not, I, I'm not sure I understand uh, yeah. you what don't we're understand trying my to do question. here myself yet. My question is if, they, if we have them as an own category <clears throat> where we carve them out or whatever right. you call it. We just said that it's going to drive up the impact fees on what is left of the, the pool. Right. Right. Yeah. No, I, I don't know. No, let me just go through it. I asked that Let, question. Let's take, we, we're calculating an average for, for all homes. I don't think we take out the deed restricted. If we know the inventory, we take them yeah, out. And if we do or don't. But, yeah. but the if number know, of deed restricted out. homes doesn't affect the number of people yeah. moving in to, to new homes because it's just people coming down here, retiring, and moving in them. So I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, about that, but I, I know if you start tinkering well, we with need, these, I, that's a pretty important question to me. Y'all both answered look, in the affirmative a minute right. ago. Mm -hmm. look, if we knew it was deed restricted right now, if you have deed restricted property in this county, we do not include that in the inventory. Is what she's saying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you're but if we carved out short term. It would make the other numbers go up. The gen yeah, rates would be higher. Yeah, yeah. The gen rate right. higher. Right. Trying to get that out of there. Let, let me ask you this. Right. To me, listening to this board net, this just seems like an awful simple resolution. You now have, you said earlier, the first time around you didn't have data. We now have data on short term rentals, right? We don't have, as far as I know, we don't have a concrete full okay. inventory. All right, then let's forget about the data it's questions. Just zoning. What, what would prevent if Lenore walked in and said, we're applying to the county and to the school for approval of this short term rental and it meets these requirements and it's deed restricted and it can never get undeed restricted unless the school board and the county agree, you know, time. At that point, what's the word? They don't but, pay fees. but we're not yeah. talking about a deed restriction. We're talking about a whole different scenario. There, there are two scenarios. Right, right. With the okay. yeah. One of them is a deed restriction like the 55 and older right. that's mm -hmm. saying we're not going to generate any students. Right. Therefore, we're not going to pay any impact fees. Mm -hmm. right. Like the villages. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Or do, do you've got several well, here. In, sure. Right. Right. So on. We're building one in St. Louis. The second scenario is a reduced Three. impact fee. Because right. there will be some students generated. There are. Right. But that amount is so much lower. Now, what you're looking at, you've got the data. You, you so why can't it. we have a reduced amount based you, on what the data is we you have You can, now. and there's two things to look at. One, do you look at the overall overlay? That's what your data shows today, is, mm -hmm. is how many students are being generated no, from that big overlay. Or you can do it based on when a development gets approved that has these elements in it that would um, make it less desirable for someone to live there full time because they aren't getting mail and they are paying a lot more for resort type amenities. So there's several different ways you can look at it um, to, in, in your, your impact fee ordinance can no, right. your right now, Indian Ridge is a great example because they've got gang mailboxes and they've got an MSTU which supposedly pays for all the common area stuff because it was originally set up as short term rentals and people, you probably have 70% traditional homeowners. Windward K, which is not in, well it's the same thing, Windward K 20 plus years ago was 90% vacation rentals, now it's probably 70% owner so occupied. My question is, my question is, the covenant. So if 2022 is 2008, that covenant is gone and we're selling those houses to they residents. They usually last at least 30 years and they automatically renew. Yeah. Is that how yours are set up? They do. And remember, you've got dis major disclosure issues. So like a super majority of all the membership would have to go in and decide. And I maybe even beyond a super majority. I, I don't know under what scenario. So what, pre that. what prevents you, Brock, from doing the, the, the straight out deed restriction nothing uh, the only there, there has been no benefit to doing that to date because but you just said you were paying five hundred thousand dollars it, it would be a benefit right right, right but but it's not, yeah. not in place but, so he didn't. but prior to now that that was not an absolute 
if you if you deed restrict the community, your fees will be waived. Okay. If that's the policy decision, it changes a little bit of the yeah. behavior. Um, I think I think the court cases says that it is an absolute, whether the county likes it or not. So all my comment is, I keep hearing that, but I've never seen a court case to where you had deed restricted. You know, just just like traffic impact fees now are half for for deed restricted, and the court cases found they did restrict it. You can't charge them. So you say the county doesn't have their ordinance. If you did it, I so don't know of they, any court that they would don't. And we it. have presented it yeah. and to change the language in the we've right. done all of that. Right. And and the request was, please don't do that until we do this right. study. And, so oh, well, we we had, that was the whole yeah. thing that started this and i said here here's change to the ordinance here's change to this here's here's a d restriction look at it please right. bless it that and they said the county right Joe? no it was here uh, okay i'm not sure where Joe, it was. Let me and ask so you, that's Joe, what let me started this. this whole thing to hopefully advance this would the board like to see us the staff thoughtfully sit down and try and work out something to deal with the issue associated with short-term rentals I need some clarification first if you don't yes. mind yes is there a way for us to identify beyond the developments that you've already identified for us the ones that have this declaration in place at this time <coughs> the county may I don't know what the count what they have in their data system I w we can ask them. I Rhonda doesn't ask? think so. I think I thought I had so asked Rhonda to ask. So we, we don't even have a way to identify the number of short-term yeah. rentals. Or? Well, well, the the uh, <coughs> it's an incredibly manual exercise. Yeah. Uh, I suppose it could be done. Uh, and and the other part of it is. Uh, the, the TDT tax license away from there. is held at the tax office, and there's definitely a count on record of the number of you know dwellings that that are active tax holders and, and leasing their units. You got to get the county to agree on an administrative process that will become very complicated, and they're going they're going to I think they're going to go suffer hand with hand trying to create the administrative process to see these transition out how the fees are going to. Can, can I, I ask a question? Of, let's uh, read the deed restrictions so much cleaner than with a monitoring I, I, process. I have a question for you. The, the reason why the west side thing is so clean is because you just draw a circle around the geography. Mm -hmm. You create two separate classes, and you can make a reasonable case that those are the fees in those two areas, right? I you don't make do that, that case. We calculated it. I got it, but it's... Hmm. That's what the data that, shows. That's what... It's, uh, it's, it would be right. a reasonable way for you to make a recommendation. The problem I have is that, just like we talked before, our fees are for a 30-year period, and so somebody outside the area pulls a permit, and somebody inside the area pulls a permit, and 15 years later, the person that we charged outside the area paid 30% too much because you're going through this 30-year transition. But that's true today with today's rules also. I'm just saying that's, that's, but yeah. the, okay. the guys, if you've got a years. physical, like, like We're 800 jumping. square foot and it sits there and it never changes, then we calculate them, but we feel very, you got to be careful with these. Never. these if you, guys, could I ask you, because we're bouncing right in the weeds, and yeah. my, my question was, does the board want us to look at trying to deal with this issue hearing the diverse viewpoint and if you do then I think we sit down in a room alone and see if we can hash out something that works but what I'm thinking of is is there are what I've understood from what Joe and Brock have said and what we've talked about in the past is that you're looking at two different approaches in in my mind the west side overlay doesn't really seem to make sense it's just too large and there are too many homes in there that are not truly short-term rental but what I've heard you say is that you would be willing or want us to consider, if the board is willing, either the idea of changing the ordinance, with some of the language that you've even proposed about deed restriction, or looking at a specific fee based on some student generation factors, whether we look strictly at Stony Brook and, or Story Lake and Champions Gate and Stony Brook as our sample size to develop a student generation rate that would make sense for a property that, when platted, was you declared to have those specific both. criteria. It's both. Yes. Yeah, it's both. both. Yeah. 
and then so that may, that was I, what I needed see to what hear the from new the board. Are and how they the and what I would ask that, is that, that is my question. Is let's say Brock and his colleagues paid a million dollars in impact fees last year. That number we know is clearly probably not covering the student cost. If they take themselves out of the equation by deepestering whatever it happens to be, yeah. by theory, they're paying a cost for students that are living in other places. How do we get that cost moved to those other places and, and based the, on this right. study? And that's you what, follow my question? Yes, that's, their that's what we did with the area. So mm -hmm. it would have to be the, that. That's why we were trying to get a full inventory of short-term rentals, so we can say this many units are generating only this much. Mm -hmm. Remaining units are generating the rest of the students, and that's why we kept getting stuck in the inventory, like the full inventory of short-term rentals. Here, here's my recommendation: the school board put four or five sentences in the ordinance and take it to the county, saying. If you did restrict the homes, we're not going to charge fees. And that's not, not the answer. No, but my question to you well, is I need to know what the impact of that is <laughs> that, on the other homes. Because Deborah. if all we're that's doing, the impact fees we're generating have these numbers in the calculation. Mm -hmm. If we take them out of the calculation, to me it's got to increase it's go the, up. the balance gen the generates. The if you don't, we don't, they don't like the west side, but if you don't create a class somehow, the unintended consequence of deed restricting means that the other fee is going to be artificially low. Correct. So what they're saying is the balloon's got to squeeze <laughs> around here. Yeah, yeah it's, it's absolutely Well, let's do that. Yeah. I guess well, you know, have the numbers kind of right here. Right. What, yeah. what additionally could be done to make, be a little different. to make somebody living in these communities that much more uncomfortable? We just sold a home to somebody at Story Lake who's going to have kids in our community, in our schools. I mean, it just happened. Um, Story what, Lake has both. No, I know. This is on the short-term side. They bought it as an investment. They're going to live in it for two, three years, and they're going to build another house with us, and they're going to use that one for a short-term rental. It's your fault. It is my fault. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> well, Can we charge eggs? the realtors? Yeah. 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 Let's charge the realtors. It'll be an assessment. That's a year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And but, that doesn't help me. <laughs> my, my point is the, they, the, the tax doesn't bother them. They have the money. They can do whatever they want to do. The mail isn't a big deal. Let's get a PO box. Right? I mean, so what? What are additional things that we done to deter people from overcoming exactly what it is the concern is, yeah. which is that you have a community and we're concerned that students are still going to be generated there, and there's not going to be a policing mechanism to make sure we can recapture that. But who cares if there are students generated there if you have a category that's designed to determine that in these. There are this many students generated in this category. So your recommendation is a split category. Okay, yeah. Where yeah. I got you. A, well, in uh, some of these, some, some of this is happening in every and, uh, category. category. You have number students being generated well, yeah, so at motels. You got oh, students being generated at the 55 plus percent. communities. <laughs> it's going to happen. <laughs> A tiny numbers. So, but it's the big yeah. averages are what we're trying Mem to get right. Members of the board, I think yeah. I couldn't have said it better than the superintendent. We need directions from the board. Would you like us to sit yes. down and try and work through this issue and come back to you at your next session with the growth Here's management what folks were going to do this four years ago? What we think works. The, I, I, I'll speak for myself. The answer is yes, but I'll say yes. Mm -hmm. we, this this board made that exact same comment yeah. two, three years three ago. Years. Yeah, We've been waiting two or three years to get to this point. Mm -hmm. So the answer is simple. Yeah, we want to figure out how to do what's right and how we go about this. Can I just ask a question of our consultant? If the direction is to try and develop a short-term rental category, how do how do you guys go about doing that and capturing the valid data? I'm hoping those can get back to me. Let me tell you my general feeling now after listening to all of you. This is almost like, what, for whatever the reason, this is a fee by geographic area. That's, that's what we showed you. Lower fee over here, a higher fee, yeah. for whatever reason. And that's what you're deciding, is this area has some kind of zoning or overlay going on, and it's 0.35, and this one rather than 0.4 is 0.42 because of, of this average thing going on. If you want to do that, I think you can legally do that. we got to be very careful writing something up that says you're going to, you know, But that's areas. all zoning. But, you but can only put apartments in these that, zones. That's the yeah. simplest way to do it. If we, get, if we start trying to deal into some kind of application or whatever or, or use is going to get really complicated in terms of... So that's of kind of my question. Things. Aside from the west side, take that out of it. 
to say here are three specific communities, can we create a category out of that? You I, can, I, but you got to deal with the county, and the county's got to be willing to permit it and review it and monitor it. So but are what, you guys are able to come up with a student we, generation? Uh, look, we, we no, I think, I think uh, what about, uh, this is just to throw yeah. it on the table. If, if they do deed restriction, just like the age restricted, Initially, we are not going to know the impact today because we don't know the inventory exactly. But just like age restricted, as people come and record themselves, after a while, like I mean, a year or whatever, we're going to have the inventory, and then we can adjust the rest of the county at that point. If I mean, that seems almost to me more we could lose millions over that two or three I don't years. think so. I, I, don't know. I think if I don't you ran the model and showed I mean, you the number that came sure online. That and then the it's difference, true. and but then every three or four years you do an update, you adjust your fees. Where, where is that inventory? I mean, if we had the inventory of full, like we had X number of short-term rental units, and here are the students out these, we can't do that right now. We just can't get that full inventory. Brock, if you had to guess, well, Brock is in the tax. Last year. But he's saying manually go find It's probably 25% of the starts last year across the county. Okay. We got to have them tagged. Board, Mr. Chair, I want to point a couple things out. First off, I mean, I've, got, I've been doing this for a long time. And this is not a new conversation. And relative to that, there's a couple things. Number one, if this is such a hot button issue for an industry that is known to be very successful and growing, nothing has stopped them from ever doing an alternative study with their own expert to present data to us so we've got something to compare it to. That's number one. Number two, we are not in the short-term rental business. We're in the educating kids business, building new schools business. Again, this is not a new issue. They've had plenty of time, and these are smart people. They could have gotten something passed where there could be a deed restriction because they know this comes up, but, it, but they haven't. So now it's a problem because what we've got here and somehow we're being unfair and we've got to solve it. Meanwhile, and this is not a knock on anybody, but this is, not, this is something that everybody knew was coming and nobody's ever done an alternative study for us to look at or come up with the language needed at the state level so we're not having these, this conversation. Jay, I guess where I'm trying to get to is something that doesn't crucify us in the process that works for No us. matter what you do, someone's going to be unhappy. I don't care if they're unhappy. I'm not looking for happiness. I don't think we ever get there. But I'm looking for something that financially is palatable to both sides where we don't take it. Well, I don't no. know can, can I say one thing? Okay. So. My understanding was that this impact fee study was to look and be that alternative study. That's what the whole concept was to do that. And in that we waited until several things to you know for timing and that's what this was supposed to address. The other thing is okay. is that it doesn't matter how you feel about it, it matters what the data shows because new growth is only supposed to pay for the impact that it generates. So if there are products that don't generate students, Ever? it doesn't matter. It's, it's a nice. rate. It's not all or nothing. That's why you have so many different generation rates that you're showing in your study. So if a product, a condominium, only generates so many it's students, it's just the same thing. This is a product that only generates this many students. So legally, how can you charge more? This is not a legal issue. This is an, an administrative issue. Every category we propose is manageable and can be administered. When, the, it's not a legal changes. issue, it's an administration issue. If you've got a product that you want the county to recognize, it has to be manageable. And that's what this whole this and, debate and is not about. Legal, and the debate is not about relative overlay. to your alternative right. relative to your alternative study though, you you would know this probably as well as anybody. Similar to an attorney, you've got two sides. Side A has their expert, side B has their expert. Our expert is our expert. Granted, we like to think they're doing things um, as objectively as they can, but clearly there is some discussion about the way it was done and what's included. Thus, it, it makes sense for the opposing, for the other side to have their own expert with their alternative view. So, that, so absent that material though, because then you legitimately have two things to compare based on, on finite data, 
but I don't have that. I'm Mr. Wheeler, we said we would work with you all and look at and be a group and look at the study and have input and do it all together instead of having two opposing um, studies that then you get into a big fight about. The whole concept here was that all everybody will work together. Are you willing to help underwrite part of the study then? I mean, I fair, work together. I'm paying for the whole thing. All right. Okay, let me um, move this That's a little bit forward. Um, so the direction board that we need to give, it seems as though there's, a, there's at least three board members that are interested in finding out a way to um, provide the relief and the remedy that the developer is looking for as a matter of policy. Am I correct in this? Um, you can, right? What are we looking for here? It's not so, just an impact fee. See, this is the thing. I don't see this just as an impact fee issue anymore. It looks like though what we're doing is we're making a policy where anyone that can go ahead and create a similar situation can be exempt. That's really what's almost happening here. Nobody's asking for Yet. you. We were, we're just looking at the numbers and the data. Well, I'm going to be able to do it in the West Side District. Well, well we I, are, I, I don't know, uh, we've, I don't know if anybody would talk about That's they, what they're going to try the, to figure out. What we would be exploring mm -hmm. is can a category mm -hmm. be yes. created called short-term rental? Mm -hmm. Right now, the county only allows it in this one area of the county. Mm -hmm. That's not to say down the road. The other end of the county could explode, and they say, let's do it there, too. Exactly. And coming back and saying, okay, we think I'm sorry, we either think it can't work or we think it can work. And if we think it can work, here are the components of what would qualify yeah. you, to, and that would give reasonable protection to the school board. But that's and, what I understood. I just, and and but, hashing out all these kind of yeah. details we've been beating around. But to be clear, and I think we're all, I think we're all on the same page about this. The west side overlay is not the solution. I won't support that. Uh, just maybe, so you guys no, no, no. But, right. but it's it's not just that. Where <coughs> the county the will or won't too. allow short term right. rental right, right. to me is irrelevant to the conversation. What's relevant to the conversation is whether or not it is or isn't Correct. short term rental. Thank you, Tim. I don't care what the zoning says. I care about what the product is actually going to be and what the generation is going to be. So finding the category, I'm open to. Using that as our basis is a, a, a non-starter. I'll have no conversation about everything in that area being exempt, period. And Frank, I need some direction yes, here. Sir. Since we're in a workshop, we're not voting on anything today, but I clearly have my wife sitting here um, <laughs> making an argument, so I have a conflict. When did Jim Brock get married? Um, <laughs> <laughs> About two years ago, when it became legal. <laughs> the best, uh, I'm going to give you the. Uh, uh, I, I will do whatever I need okay. to do, but I want to well, be I'll on the give record. You the best legal <laughs> advice I can give you that you will thank me for the right. Just agree with her. <laughs> like would be fine, but thank you for disclosing that. I actually think. Under one technical thing, you don't have a conflict, but I'm going to double check with ethics right. like I always do. Okay. I like to try to maybe I can get some clarification on what you, how you want to move forward. So to me, the issues are the county's got to agree that somebody's going to pull a permit that they can both define and monitor. So the county administration of the impact fee is going to be involved in this. Because they're not going to agree to do something that one can't get reported, and two, if he transfers and changes. Mm -hmm. So what I'm hearing is, if we don't want to talk about deed restriction, we're going to have to be very creative, of come up with some kind of things that we can go measure, as an existing product that the county is going to agree to to administer, that can be monitored. Am I? Is that what I'm mm -hmm. hearing? That, that sounds correct. Okay. So I think you might want to talk to the county staff yeah. up front, yeah. because it doesn't matter what we do. If the county um, staff says, I can't have a person come in. I, I disagree with you on this front. Let's get ourselves together yeah. in a Let's unified see position. What it is. And then I'm more comfortable going to talk to the county saying this is what we all agree with. And I think that this is very, Joe, you were the county. It's very easy for me. There's a violation. It's a code violation. And you just build it in so they can be cited and brought in front of code enforcement. All right? I mean, there's a way to build this and work on this. So I think it's 
let us do what we do. But I think right now, if I walked into the county, there are so many swirling comments, I'd look and go, get out of our building. I'm not agreeing to, to yeah, anything. But, <laughs> well, and honestly, those points are wrong. It would, no, it would we're going to have to get futility them. if we don't start to get the wheels mo moving in all directions so that when we get to that point, we actually can get it yeah, across the finish line. Yeah, yeah. And, and these products generate great ad valorem for this county. Yeah. 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 So, so I agree with where you're going. But it, it, Chairman Sardis, Chairman Sardis, Chairman Sardis, may I suggest then that okay. we do some work as a staff with Joe and Brock and, and Frank and some others, as well as with, with county um, administration in that regard. And then we're going to need to have another workshop on October the 3rd, I would suggest. I'm going to be here. We currently don't have one on the agenda. I will not be here. He won't, he won't be here, so let's do it on the So third. definitely the third. <laughs> what other date? What are the date? What other date can we have this workshop besides the third? The next board meeting is not until October the 19th. I think that's pushing it out pretty far. Why is the 19th not? When, are you, when do you leave? When I you mean, is there like some kind of deadline that we're fighting against? I just don't think this can drag on forever. No, no. That, I don't no like things dragging on forever either, but... I don't like these rushing things just because either. So right. it looks like back October do we really need to push this on to the third or wait until the nineteenth? Well, well, whenever you want to make I can be why, I can why be second. Why not in between? Yeah, which, how long either before or after he's gone. It doesn't I have to do, be on a regular schedule. Meeting. I could do the second, I could do the twenty ninth. Second is 29. It's going to take us a little bit of time. Yeah, guys, yeah, yes, yeah. 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 No, there's so many other I'm people that aren't even here. This is some data that's going to have to be pulled. It looks pulled. like the third is just right around the corner. I think the guys. point would be instead oh, of waiting until the 19th, okay, no, this, this shouldn't be any rush. I don't see. The 19th. Sure. That's the point. Yeah. Let's look at the 19th and see if that's a... Um, that's a that's we're possible. collecting impact fees every day. So whether we make it by December So we can hold on. That's what I mean. No, we're not going to... I'm sorry, it's October 17th. It's our board meeting. We have a facilities... Updated four. Yeah. So we start with four. The 17th. I'm here at the 17th. We, we have a master board training at 11. Or when we plan to master board training that day that yeah. starts at 11, remember? And it's our last uh, well, master board training. That's a no. I mean, it's a so what, what's wrong with the, the third, then? Just that Jay can't be here? I'll be in Houston. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But that's I can but it's real too early too. on the third, like 7 a.m. It's too. It's too I soon. don't. You think that's too soon? Well, Based on yeah, what I honestly, heard, guess, the, we're, 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 that they want to figure out. Yeah, we're we're going to be away from like, the end of the month. Yeah, like, I can wait until the end of the month. Okay. okay. Why not like the 10th or something like that? Get off cycle and just, yeah. it gives you yeah. more time. Yeah. And, yeah. I didn't bring my phone on my calendar. Yeah. Tanya, Tanya, can you look at my calendar? And, and let me just throw in here then. Could um, we, there's a thing on here, next step with the, with the uh, growth management task force. Is there a reason that conversation couldn't all happen at one time? Kill two birds you mean invite them in or yeah. do yeah. that in the meantime? No, no. No, it, instead of trying to force that. Just invite October them in. October 10th, yeah. Yeah. my <laughs> calendar, <laughs> my professional calendar. No, we want your personal calendar. <laughs> 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 you pretty same. much know yeah. that, Tim. <laughs> I could do okay, noon. stock K could be shifted. Noon or one, I could do. I got to be somewhere. Clear. So, how about one on October the tenth, or two on October the tenth? Noon. 10th? I got to be. I got somewhere. I noon on October the tenth. Noon. I can do noon. I'm just seeing when I'm in Chicago. You guys. I'll try to be here. Right, like well, I can be at noon. The four corners, we say ten or eleven. Yeah, but that's over at eleven, correct? Ten to eleven thirty. Mm -hmm. All right, so then noon. Noon, 1230. 1230. 1230. 1230, okay. 1230. 1230. Could I ask this, Deborah? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, is that a, yes, sir. what exact, we're bringing back on this, uh, on, on impact fees that day, the issue that we just talked about, right? I, I want to make sure we're very focused when we come Don't back. Don't make me repeat it because no, I no, no. already. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, to be quite honest just, with you, I, I, we're bringing I back short-term rentals as another category. As yes. another category on that day. And what day. the impact would be on, the on other. their fees so, right. and on the other, other. fees. Scheduled two Based hours on as much right. data as we can find for student generation and that's, rates in the current that's that's the, you know, property. properties. That's the okay, good, because I'm not going to sit here and talk about it. And I would need for you to help us develop what the language would look like to define that category. I was about to say, well, the attorneys would put some parameters on how this would hold up. But we'll have to work on how we can gather it. It would be very helpful. Dr. Joe. 
Oh, and then we've also got the high school. Why don't we just take it up here? Lost school. I'm listening at 1230 to 1230. We sat here. John and Larry. She wrote them down. Oh, she did too. Yeah. So, hey, go find the numbers and bring the next one. I don't know. No, I think it's the 1230. They were talking okay, about I don't know what it was. Yeah, I got to be out here at 2 30. Yeah, yeah. 3 o'clock. Yeah, all right. So how are they going to find all the 19? <laughs> all right, so that's if you haven't got any confusion, directions. Clarence, yeah. do we want to invite growth management to the meeting on the 10th, or should we hold them and have Maybe we should hold them because that's going to be a very specific meeting. I think that's going to be a very specific meeting, and then we'll try to get them I mean, they could come back want, next. But before the board actually votes, we'd like to go to that. They're not allowed to speak. Set up. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank We're going to go ahead and join. Uh, thanks, guys, for coming. Thank you very much. <laughs> Question, no. Deborah. Is this turned off, Tanya? I'm sorry. Um, I got a call to the Narcusi drop off time, middle school. <laughs>